You know what? Let's just jump right in. All right. OBS, if you could catch up with us, please. That'd be fantastic. No? Not gonna... Oh, there we go. Fantastic. All right, we're back in it. Uh, hey, everybody, and welcome back to How Not to LCMP. So, if I remember last time, we were trying to knock out this uh, ComSat contract that we were kind of forced into taking. Uh, I worked a lot on developing this LV to do it all in one go. It is just a slightly modified uh, BPZEN. Um, we stretched the drop tanks and stretched these upper tanks. We also switched the RCS propellant to Arizine and Nitrogen Tetroxide, because we can do that now. Rocket Goose, how's it going? Good evening. Good to see you. Toggle these open. So, and there's our uh, three commsats all snuggled in here nicely. They do have a solar panel up top. But other than that, they're they're pretty dumb. Uh, oh, I forgot to... You know what? Let's make that all foil. and Let's make these things all foil also. So we're going to do a test run with this just to make sure. And you know what? I think I want to enable staging on those three. And I want my fairings to be not in that stage. How about down this one? Down here. That would be great. Yeah. And this way we can just... Uh, well, I'm hoping we can deploy them one at a time so it doesn't really matter which ones because we won't fire the spin motors until after they are separated so there's that excellent all right now let's uh hit save on this one and let's take it for a quick test run just to make sure toggle closed save it and let's run this quick sim and we can get this thing built so that we can move on with our lives and not be bothered with this ridiculous uh, ComSat contract thing for very much longer. We got Gemini stuff to do, which, by the way, I remind me, I, that, that'll be the next thing we get to, honestly, after we put this in the build queue, is uh, I made changes, not real changes, to the LV. I basically took uh, the F2T launcher and... Uh, uh, watch them hauls it. Hey, we'll get to that later. <laughs> how, about, how about we we just get to that part a little later? Make sure MechJeb doesn't ditch the sats like last time. <laughs> yeah, we should probably put a stop at stage four in effect here just to make ding dang sure. All right, I want to see my yep, periapsis above. So our target apogee for launch is going to be 6375. With our target periapsis, so let's put that at 180, and our attach altitude also at 180. We can go current here. Uh, I think I can up this to 2200, and our booster pitch rate should be okay-ish. We'll see how well this goes. Uh, we don't need a turn to zero. We can leave that at 90. All right. Um, derp, derp. Engage autopilot, and go. Nice little kafwump off the pad, thanks to those casters. That's a beautiful sound. I know, I've remarked on that three or four times. How are the pups? Ugh, annoying. <laughs> They're adorable. It's the problem. But yeah, man, like, they need to go outside about every two hours. They really, all they want to do is just play and jump, and oh, man. So, <laughs> our, our, our current dog is somewhere between... 10 and 12, we don't really know. She was a rescue. Anyway, she was really unsure about him for like the first day, and then she kind of warmed up to him. And, and oh man. Uh, I want to say it was Tuesday last week. She decided, like, I can play with these. These are fun. And started chasing them all over the yard, and they're running around roughhousing and having a great time. And we started throwing the ball for our. For, our older dog, and somehow she she hurt her ankle. We don't know if it's a torn ACL. She's on a bunch of pain meds and anti-inflammatories to see if that helps her get better, but she was limping around pretty bad for that day and had to take her to the vet and get her all kinds of meds, and now we have to keep her sedated so that whatever she hurt can start to heal. 
And so she just made friends with these two little puppies and wants to play with them all the time. But we have to keep her doped up so that she doesn't keep hurting herself. <laughs> I'm like, oh, finally. Finally, you have puppies to play with. And you want to play with them and you hurt yourself. Being old is the worst. Do not advise. <laughs> So it's been an adventurous week of trying to keep a dog who's really eager to play uh, from playing and trying to keep these pups from peeing all over everything. We keep them in a like corral thing most of the time, which is hard to do because they're adorable and you just want to take them out and snuggle them all the time. But of course, if you do, you're going to get peed on. And that that's a whole thing. <laughs> Yeah, she seems to be doing a whole lot better now. Like, she's not favoring it anymore. We're thinking, hopefully, it's not a torn ACL. She just maybe twisted her ankle a little bit. Because she's not... She's putting weight on it. She's running around. She's able to jump up on the bed again. So we're thinking the pain meds and the anti-inflammatories are working. So it's probably not something that's going to be serious or require surgery. But, I don't know. We're supposed to keep her doped up for a week or so and then see if she gets any better when she comes off the medication. So that'll be the real, like, I don't know, determining factor, I guess. Staging, kapow, and moving along. Excellent. <laughs> but, so yeah, she's uh, she's quickly on the mend, so we're, we're all pretty happy about that. And just like, I don't know. All we really wanted to do was give her somebody to play with, and now the uh, the puppies are going in for a neuter and a spay on Thursday, so they'll probably need most of the weekend to recover from that. And of course, just as our pup will be getting off of her meds and ready to play, the, the puppies will go in <laughs> to get neutered and spayed, and then they will be on meds and sedated, so they won't want won't be able to play. <laughs> Life is just... Yeah, it's real inconvenient. Nobody's getting what they want out of this equation, except me. I get puppies to snuggle, and because it was Lady Crash's idea, she has to deal with most of the pee. I have not let her out of that one yet. <laughs> Dogs hurt herself like that, not so bad, because she gets way too excited chasing birds at the beach. The sheep dog thinks she can hurt the flying sheep. <laughs> Aww, that is super cute. <laughs> I'll say, yeah, our, uh, our, our older dog is a Australian cattle dog, so she tries to corral or herd anything and everyone. Like, it's a big problem when we have people over, because if people just, like, walk in, she doesn't like people standing or, you know, being in, like, the front of the house. She, she will bark at you until you go sit down. <laughs> and then she's like, okay, you're cool now. You're in your proper place. I'll leave you alone. But if you get up to, like, do something, as most adults will tend to do, yeah, nah. You're getting yelled at a lot, <laughs> and it gets a—it's uh, a thing. <laughs> so usually, when we, we'll have guests over to the house, we'll put the dog outside and wait for everybody to come in and kind of get settled down, and be like sitting in a spot, and then we'll let her in. In which case, she just moseys on in, gives everyone a little sniff, and then just wanders off because she's like, "Okay, everybody's in their place. I guess I'm, my work is done here. Job complete." When we used to take her to the dog park, that was a riot. Any dog with curly hair, she'd be like, no, you. You need to be where I tell you to be. How goes the mock Jesus sausage dispersal today? So far, so good. One simulated pack of simulated sausages simulatedly dispersed over the simulated Atlantic. We're just doing a, a test run for our early communications network satellites. Relatable. Our dog doesn't say she loves to try herd cars. Oh boy. Ooh, yeah, that would be quite unnerving. <laughs> that would terrify me. Honest to God. Alright, so we're going to boost up to this apogee. It's going to shut down at 6.375. We need to be at 6.371. Excellent. So now we just uh, come to Maneuver Planner, circularize the next apogee, create node, and Execute next node, please. Oh, we probably want RCS to be armed to do this. That would be great. Best part about this business plan is if you don't even need to cook the sausage, it will cook itself on the way down. 
<laughs> you know, I had not even that had not even crossed my mind, but yes, they are uh, friction heated all the way to the surface. <laughs> I mean, it's three meters of sausage. I wonder what kind of temp you'd have to get it up to to make sure you cooked all of the inside. To I mean, gosh, what's pork? One sixty-five. <sighs> So if, if you have a sausage that is three meters by 400, three meters long by 400 millimeters thick, how much heat do you need to apply to cook the entire thing to 165 degrees before splashdown? <laughs> yeah, I hope you're not waiting for me to answer because it's the weekend and I don't do math. I leave this as an exercise for you, the viewer. You know, for this wouldn't be that hard. That's fine. <laughs> Have at it. <laughs> Did you hear about the company which is proposing roasting coffee, coffee in a reentry capsule? I did not. There's got to be some massively expensive coffee, in my opinion, or I would think. But no, I did not hear about that. I am interested. I I would forgo a car payment to taste this coffee. Uh, Lady Crash would murder me. Three meters by uh, three meters long by four hundred and twenty millimeters thick. I believe. Yeah. Diameter is uh, diameter should be about 400 and 420 millimeters. We will double check our measurements here momentarily. Uh, are we? Yep. Okay. Uh, Bort node execution. Let's uh, fire off some satellites. I don't know. Should we even try to fo face them into the sun? Uh, kill rotation here is good. This way we just have to kind of roll. I think. Opens Excel. <laughs> yeah, let's tip this back. Roll into it a little bit. We'll deploy our first little guy. We'll just turn that off for now. Oh, geez, how are you looking? 94, 93. 92, 89, so we missed the window on that guy, probably, didn't know. Should probably pin that open so I can keep an eye on it, right? 85, 7, 89, 90, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, slowing down, 6, 96, deploy, switch vessels, Why won't they stage? Oh, whatever. No one cares anymore. You know what? We're just testing. We don't really need everything to be accurate. Katunk. Katunk. Uh, vessel not BPZE Comsat Net 1. So I need to toggle between all three of them. Shake out testing. Hey, sweet! Um, I am gonna zap through this and see if they, if it matters that their solar panels aren't oriented to the sun. We're gonna lose com on them at some point. And, or are we? Yeah, no, they're completely out of electric charge. No one cares. Apparently that does not, uh, diminish our shakeout testing. It doesn't matter <laughs> if they actually... <laughs> we need you to deploy these ComSat satellites. Okay, do you want to be more specific? Absolutely not. Ding, shakeout testing complete. Fantastic, this will work. All right, uh, revert to VAB and let's get those measurements. The company is called Space Roasters, but it never happened. Oh, it's not the most practical, you don't say. Just look them up and they seem to be still about making coffee stuff, just not re-entry re roasters. 
All right, uh, toggle open. All right, so the dimensions of our sausage, three meters, uh, 420 millimeters thick. I mean, I guess you can just use the math for a cylinder, even though it's not a cylinder. It's got a fillet of a fillet, 420 millimeters. So I guess that means the capsule end um, comes all the way down to zero. Which, yeah, if you want to do the area of a capsule, you can you can figure that out. Because I'm not doing any math today. <laughs> you just make regular old ground bean roasters. Oh. I mean... I guess I am just a little bit disappointed. Alright, uh, toggle open close. Let's get this thing on the build list. Oh wait, we have to modify our launch pad first because it doesn't have any accommodations for our fuel. That'll take three days. Yeah, fine. Modify. Okay. Alright, and let's go ahead and open up our next Gemini revision so that we can actually knock out the docking part of that before we go completely broke because we are way 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 done like we're way past the expiry on that one all right uh zenith blue for two docker bravo load so yeah uh not a whole lot of changes here uh other than basically everything below this decoupler got switched out for an f2t we did uh Reduce the utilization on our boosters. Yeah, like these, because we got to keep it under the 160 ton limit. Um, what are we at for this little guy? 157.771. But the old launcher was like 120 tons. So this is uh, far and away more capable than its predecessor. So let's uh, move this to, yeah, 101, 120 to 160. What do we have to modify? I didn't think we'd have to. Can I just add you to the... Nope. Okay, vessel cannot be built. Parts are still in development. Okay, unlock two parts for zero, spending 5,000 on my credit. Fuel cell? They put a friggin' fuel cell on this? Still doing stuff? Uh, you know. Yes, I guess it does qualify as stuff. Welcome. <laughs> uh... Sully Joe? Man, I hope I didn't butcher that. I'm gonna butcher all of it. Uh, I mean, Acknowledge doesn't add it to the build list, I'm hoping. Oh, yeah, we got tooling. Tooling cost? The fuck? What did I do? Let's pull it apart and take a look. So, no, that is... That, that should be that upper ring. Did I put fuel cells on this? Oh, sure enough, I did. Did I put fuel for the fuel cells on this? Okay, one tank of liquid hydrogen. One tank of liquid oxygen. They look to be even, so that's not going to work. Oh, wait, here's the third tank, liquid hydrogen. So we do have our 2 to 1 ratio. Uh, balance is probably all screwy. The old videos. Oh, the old 1.1.3. Man, I do miss that series. I do miss it a lot sometimes. All right, uh, let's pull this off just for a second. We gotta take a look at some stuff here. Yeah. Huh. It's not really the axis I imagined us being off on, but okay. Well, that is considering our engines. No, it is not. Let's drop you down a stage. And then, boom, our torque goes to nada. Oh, okay then. You know what? I'll take it. Let's just slap it all back together and be done with our everything. Because that torque is from the uh, one of the escape motors. Um, the triple pair that we have here, this one facing out has more fuel than the other two. So it gives you that tip that you need. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Does it have the hidden motor? No, it does not. I thought I put one up here in the nose tip, but I didn't. Okay, yeah, then I must have do it by fuel imbalancing and not putting them on exactly symmetrically. So, hey, cool. Did some more work in your X-Plane program. Sweet. 
managed to make a jet go Mach 6. Oh, man. The X-15 cockpit gets too toasty. Dude, yeah, I, could, I, I can see that being the case. That is plum mighty fast. All right, let's tuck you back together. And leave a little gap for the Kraken. Guten dog, save. Oh, did I mess up the staging by doing any of this? All right, hold on, let's take a look. Main engines, clamps, uh, booster sep, staging, RCS enable. Boom. Did you get into KSP2 at all? I have played it. I do own it. I played it on release day. Um, the My main problem with KSP2 is that I have an aging, loudly complaining uh, 1060 <laughs> that, that doesn't... Uh, that doesn't want to cooperate very well with KSP2. Yeah, and that's LES. So the, the experience of playing it was, I don't know, less than ideal for me. Let's have the drogue shoot go before the primary. How about them apples? Boom. Nope. Un oh, cancel integration. Let's, yeah, let's tool this up. Tool all. Oh, well, we got it in unlock credit, so let's go ahead and purchase all toolings. What the fuck did... Oh, it, that's all the, the support system tanks, stuff like that. The fancy new laptop, it also hates KSB2. Yeah, like, you gotta spend a lot of money for your machine not to hate KSB2. Alright, let's try this again. Added to the integration list. Let's go ahead and build two of them, because they're only 19 grand. Why not? And in case one of them screws up. All right. Save, let's get back out onto this screen so we can warp ahead three days, start building our ComSat cheater program. Hmm. Uh, I don't know to which you refer. All right, Zenith Blue for two, Docker Bravo, good. Those are the only ones we have building. Uh, wow, January 1969, that sucks. Venus Lander test vehicle. Interesting, but okay. And the jets, and we've got nothing building here because that's our 350 ton. We got nothing that requires it right now. Uh, but we do have a Venus Lander being built on the F2 pad. Oh, I guess we can't access our reconditioning or our, yeah, our pad that we're reconditioning, which should be not 101. Okay, I guess it's not even on the list. Heats is the word. Yeah, fancy new custom gaming PC with a 4090 in it. Heats KSB2. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Wow, we are losing money pretty dang fast. Oops. That sucks. Oh, yeah, that's also because we're redoing Orbiter 1. And hopefully that will change once that is done. Oh, yeah, it got worse. Excellent. Uh, I, I don't think we need either one of these, to be honest with you. So let's scrap them both. Give me back my money. And let's go ahead and build our... Comsat cheater thing that should take uh, not too much time. I think you get KSP2 once the colony stuff comes out. Fair. I like the idea of resource management. I wonder when they'll be scaled up or RSS mod. Yeah, so I think I there's a lot about KSP2 that I like. I like some of the updated graphics. I like the native multi-thread. I like kind of some of the form, if not the function, because the functionality is crap on my machine. And I think after a while of them optimizing it, it could be a whole lot of fun. Oh gosh, which one is it? BPZEN. Comsat Net 1. Yeah, it has to be Comsat. These are all Navisats. Load. I'm like, I'm probably going to play it. Just not until, like, I don't know. I've tried to play stock KSP after getting into RSS, and it's... I just can't do it, man. 
Like, I just, I can't. And so I probably won't actually start playing KSB2 until there's a good, not only real solar system, but, um, like an RP1 or something similar for it. All right, and leave. I think we're done with our VIB stuff. We just got to wait for things to build and hope that we don't run out of... Oh, wait, no, I have a Venus um, orbiter that needs to start getting built. Womp womp. I guess, I don't know, that would require having to move staff over. Yeah, orbiter one, maxed out. We got no other unassigned. Nobody's on the 350-ton pad, so we're going to leave that alone. LC-101 could probably use a few more engineers. What are we building on the F2 pad currently? Now, another Venus lander, but that doesn't have to be ready anytime soon. So let's take 200 engineers off of that and let's get them onto 101. Boom, boom. So we can at least try to get some of those Gemini missions knocked out before we go completely bankrupt because. Wow, we're bleeding money. Did I start a construction or something? Oh yeah, tracking station upgrade. Good job, doofus. And that'll be done 1024. So quite a while, and honestly, the upgrade is nice, but we don't need it. So we can cost per day. <laughs> okay, hey, that makes our, our bleeding a little more manageable. So, oh, man, we're going to lose 16 grand while we're waiting for that thing to be done, but no choice, and at least if we get it done, we can end that program and pick up something that actually gives us lots more money. All right, uh, so yeah, I guess uh, warp to complete. That's what, October 11th? It's current. Wow, really? It's August. Well, yeah, I guess it's September, October. That makes sense. Got into KSP2 for a few months and tried modded KSP1 with a million frames per second. It was such a breath of fresh air. Dude, right? <laughs> I feel you. All right, let's 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 get this done. Roll it out. It's three more days of bleeding money. Good God. Three. We're going to lose three grand over the course of that. Oof, duh. Ding. All right, let's get this done. Feels like it's going to be a while till KSP2 RP1 gets up to scratch. Yep, like it's taking a decade for modded KSP1 to get this good, indeed. But I'm hoping that the platforms are similar enough, or that the code behind is similar enough to where most of the architecture that they've got built out for, like, uh, RP1 will, you know, be copy pasta at that point. That's my hope. I have no idea, obviously, but it would be really cool if most of the most of the stuff that they've got set up in the background making it work was actually just plug and play. All right, let's do this for real. Engage autopilot. This is all set and ready to go. And ignition. Please don't fail because I didn't build a backup. Let's do the exact same thing that we just did. All right. Scott Manley seems hopeful. Really? Is he going to start doing KSP stuff again? I thought he was kind of like, time to leave the past in the past. Which really sucks, because, I don't know. He's, he did that He did that RSS series, and then it was kind of like the end of the road for Scott Manley KSP content. Which makes me extra, extra sad, because, well... Scott Man the end of Scott Manley's series was kind of what gave me the kick in the pants to start making the 1.1.3 playthrough. So like, no, you can't do this, Scott Manley, we need you. <laughs> and then it was gone, as quick as it started. Yeah, space news. I mean, he's hopeful about KSB2. Oh, okay. I, 
I mean, I am also, I'm very hopeful. Like, they've got what appears to be a good structure for which to build a game that could be a complete and utter time sink for me, like KSP1 has been for the last decade. <laughs> but... If running it in anything higher than like 720 means I have to go spend a couple hundred bucks upgrading my computer, which I'm just not in a position to do, it's going to be a good long while before I get to actually enjoy it. And honestly, until there's like, until it's got some mechanics that make it, that really set it apart from KSV1, like colonization, as you mentioned. I just don't get that same thrill out of playing that I do when I play RSS. And so that might be the big wait and hold for me. So I'd, I'd rather play KSP1, Real Solar System RP1, on a frame rate that's not entirely terrible than just played like if K, stock KSP on a shitty frame rate. It could be pretty, but I'll never know because the frame rate is god awful. Quick punch in the face. That kick in the face has got to be worth four or five extra me uh, meters per second of Delta V. Scott Manley KSP1 series videos. Oh yeah, they they definitely still hold up. That was like top tier, man. So it would only take between 160 and 201 kilojoules to cook a three meter <laughs> by 0 0.43 meter sausage. Sweet. <laughs> now let's pay attention to our speed and altitude when we ditch our sausages. We got about a minute left to go and 800 meters per second. So we'll be traveling, you know, close to 4,600 meters per second when they let go, maybe 4,800 meters per second. At an altitude, yeah, that might be megajoules. Oh, interesting. Okay. Got to move a decimal place, right? All right, hold on a second. I need to be paying close attention to our uh, airspeed and altitude when these tanks go. 20 seconds to uh, sausage deployment. Hmm. Smooth the stage is. KSP2, this would be potato quality. Absolutely. All right, 46.6 at 145. Got to take those two components and figure out how many uh, joules of heating. How many, I don't know, how much energy in joules we would get moving through the atmosphere at that speed on a regular parabolic arc. That's where it gets hard. <laughs> Megajoules. Okay, 160 to 201 megajoules to cook a 3 meter by 0 0.43 meter sausage. <laughs> and I don't know, how legit with this do we want to be? I mean technically they're fuel tanks so it's a hollow sausage it's just a meat casing <laughs> it's uncooked pork wrapped around kerosene so i don't know if we assume the wall thickness of our sausage we'll be generous and say it's an inch i mean that reduces our our heat load needed to cook significantly because now it's hollow Let's just make poor Jeff do math after math after math, because it's the weekend and I refuse to do it. <laughs> yes. Whoop! <laughs> there we go, and we made it up to six point three six, which that does not satisfy our contract requirements, does it? No, nope, not Mac Jeb. Contract. We need to be at six point 
6.37, we're at 6.36, so yeah. Angle to prograde, please. Oh, hey, infrared radiometry just transmitted something back, giving us some kind of science. No, I want a three meter lodge sausage, damn it. I mean, don't we all? Six point three, yeah, we want to be at seven five. We'll just go ahead and burn off a whole bunch of our RCS propellant, I suppose. Nah, we got plenty. Looking good, looking good. Six point three seven five. There we go. Circularize at the next apogee. Create node. Nine hundred eighty four point three meters per second. Well within margin. Uh, execute next node, please. I guess we'll try to be nice to our customer and do an actual deployment for some strange reason. I can't figure out why we would actually do that. <laughs> We're not giving them a network that's uh, worth a damn at all, but, you know, here we are. launch overall it did go swimmingly I'll say this is our oldest current and service rocket and I think we've been flying variations of this thing uh, since first orbital <laughs> back then though the the upper stage was a gamma 2 maybe it went from a gamma 2 to an RD 105 and then an 0109 and now it's on the 405H with the sausage stage. Although the sausage stages came into effect when it was the uh, 0105. It had to bank pretty heavily. Oh, also, I added a bunch more MLI layers to this thing, so we, we lose a whole lot less to boil off. So we got that going for us. Which is nice when you have to take a lap for an hour and some coin but yeah enough mli layers on an isogrid tank and it basically makes a uh, liquid oxygen a storable propellant i think uh, i have one or two layers on this and we don't lose very much at all but yeah <laughs> long sausage was censored <laughs> wait what i didn't even get to see that that was twitch that was not one of my moderation rules <laughs> That's funny. Just two comments prior. Jeff can say long sausage. <laughs> but you can't. Hmm. Boil off is so bad in RP1, indeed. Uh, Alright, yep, we hit all the things. So abort node execution and kill rotation. I wonder that too, but... Man, some company just recently attempted uh, a lunar lander thing that was basically liquid hydrogen powered. And so it makes me like, oh, they got this boil off thing solved. <coughs> Maybe not, but they can at least get, you know, something liquid hydrogen powered to the moon. Let's tip us around till we can get this little guy in the sun. Eighty-six, eighty-seven, eighty-eight. We basically tip until it uh, the number stops going up, and then we go back, and then we roll until it's a hundred percent, and then we deploy. Three, the number has slowed significantly, so I think that's where we're gonna be. Yeah, we'll just we'll stop it here. Roll it in. I just sneaky little atom that escapes our best plans. It mm-hmm. Everyone's best laid plans are 
nothing for hydrogen. Alright, decouple. Katunk. Let's get this thing in working trim. Um, command, no. Part, no. Comms, no. Science. No, shouldn't there be a deploy button or something here? What am I missing? Active enabled, science, uh, telemetry, and electric charge. Yeah, we know about that. Command, rename, no. Part, nope, nope, nope. Open all of these up. Let's. Yeah, where's my deploy button, yo? Am I really that dumb? Can I just not see it? Huh. Interesting. That that's not working. No. -ho! <laughs> Thank you so much for the gifting those out. Prevailing space. Free sub. <laughs> Sunder. Hi, Sunder. Sunder, buddy. Good to see you, man. <laughs> Thank you so much. Greatly appreciated. All right, let's switch back. Let's get these rolled out and roll them out. Ba boom, ba boop. Um, there are no perks to being subscribed, by the way, but it does make me feel better about myself. <laughs> All right, uh, 97, 98, 99, 100. Kill it right there, please. And let's get you off the boat. Decouple. Katunk. Good day. And let's go ahead and switch to that one. I'm not even, I don't even know if we're on the right one. Oh, yeah, this has to be the right one because you are wobbling like an idiot. Let's see if we can arrest some of that at just the right moment. Trying to be legit by our, uh, why the hell can't I turn these on? Oh, because they don't have any electric charge, so we don't technically have control over them. Right. That's how it goes. Anyway. We're going to try the XLR25 on rockets rather than planes. Been having a lot of success using an upper stage engine on your early LVs. Uh, I use the XLR11 on... A lot of upper stages, actually. Like I've done that way more than is uh, is legitimate. <laughs> so I'd say, yeah, viable strategy, definitely. Katunk, decouple, switch. All right, testing time. Network up after two days. Bummer, y'all don't have any electric charge, and I can't actually turn you on. But hey, not my problem. <laughs> Gotta run, keep up the fight against entropy. I will do my best, Soli Joe. Thank you so much for gifting out those subs. Much appreciated. Have a uh, have a good rest of your weekend. And, uh, hopefully uh, we'll see you next week. Alright, how much Delta V do you have? 400 meters per second. Not nearly enough to do uh, anything about it, but uh, let's angle you into retrograde and just see what happens. Or at least reduce your orbit so you have uh, less of a chance to bang into our satellites and smack into stuff, I guess. Who knows? Elvage, elvage, elvage. Last ignition for this engine. Let's just get it done now the way. ba -fump. Wow. Way to overcompensate there, buddy. Excellent work, anyway. Uh, I guess we don't have much else going on for us, so let's just hang out. Oh, yeah, we're we're too far now. <laughs> we'll just hang out up here until our satellites are handed over to the customer. In one day and 20-some-odd hours, we got nothing else to do, really. Reconditioning a launch pad. We're bleeding money like crazy. We don't care about throttle. We don't care about RCS. You just do your thing. Continue to spin until your batteries eventually die and you just become another...
clump of space junk doing exactly nothing. Yeah, we do not care about those three probes. We literally do not care about any of them. Ding! Yay! Back to the space center. Let's go close out that program and pick up something with money. Like interplanets flybys. Yeah. XLR is so heavy though. It is, definitely. Um, I guess I didn't see much of a future for the XLR 25. That was me. It's, I don't know. <laughs> I'm really bad at strategizing this game, so don't take what I do as advice or endorsement. <laughs> 100% is none of those. All right, admin building. Active programs, early commercial applications. Check, check, check. And yeah, look at that funding. Pow, done. Oh, wait, we're here. This is going to ramp up for how long? We're going to get 185000 this year and some other amount next year. Uh, small bodies fly. Well, how many slots does this take up? Uh, slots taken one. We're at seven, we have seven. Dang it. Venus surface exploration is our next one. Hopefully we'll knock that out really soon. But that's 960 grand a year. Sweet. Uh, advanced crude orbit. <laughs> We're here. The end of the program was here. We're just going to keep bleeding money on that. So, oh, buddy. Um, maybe I should have updated this save. Man. Uh, shoot. Because this only takes... Well, hold on a second. Early commercial applications is one slot. Slot taken, one. Program slot, seven. So this takes three, and this takes three. So that's six, and that's seven. So even if we did cancel that program, we don't have enough free slots to pick up small bodies flyby. Canceling this, um, or ending this, basically just takes away a bunch of funding that we would otherwise get with no way of bringing in more funding. This is going to take at least a year. Well, we got our launch window coming up in a hundred and some odd days. So this hopefully we could knock out before the end of year two. That frees up three and then we can get that. That gives us four total. We could take, I mean, not a whole lot we could really do. We could pick up Mars surface exploration. That would be fun. Or we could do small bodies, flyby, which is... Uh, we can't take it on breakneck? Man, bummer. But fast. 480 grand a year. That's not bad. Probably more legit to use the XLR-11 than the 25. Neither were used on rockets. The XLR-11 went on a missile, right? I believe... It's got a configuration that has a gimbal, but only one ignition. And it mentions about it being used for some upper stage in something. So... Plutonian landings. Hold the phone. Are you going to give me 960 grand a year for 31 years to do that? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Asteroid is work in progress. Mercury exploration. Mercury orbit and landing. Not for 720 grand a year. Are you kidding me? Crude lunar exploration. This is this is the big money. Which, yeah, look at that funding curve. Yeah. bang if you do it fast, yeah, once you, 12 years, breakneck is nine years. That's historically accurate, but yeah, that funding curve, sweet. Definitely want crude lunar on breakneck, yeah. So, you know, I'll never get it done. I'm certainly not in a position to do it right now. I want to take small bodies flybys, and I guess the only way to do that is to upgrade a facility so I can get the extra slot so that now that I'm done with this, I can just you know, get, I can cash it out and then I'll have two slots and I can take small bodies flybys, which is good money. Breakneck would be easier. I think we could do it at breakneck because it's, it's three launches basically on a vehicle we have. All the tech is there to do this. We just need to hit the windows. Funding ramp is so bad unless you take breakneck. Fair. Fair enough. Say, I kind of like this even funding until it's done. Whereas, you know, like lunar exploration, the funding ramp. Well, you can have a little money, you can have a little more, you know, a little more, a lot more, maybe. And then it kind of evens out. And then, uh, the F you, like development costs, trading costs, rollout costs. 
is, I guess, how it's supposed to be curved. I don't know. You probably know more about that than me. It's also, hi, Sinev. How's it going? Good to see you. All right. What are we doing, and how are we still losing money? <laughs> it's because we're building a tracking station. It's 206 a day. Let's take that down. That should put us in the positives. We are basically awaiting our Zenith Blue for two to be ready, because that's our next thing coming up, except for our Venus window in 51 days. You dumb fuck. All right. Uh, let me find my orbiter. Because I just wanted to make sure we could have a comms, um, another comsat over Venus while we're flying our little, our lander test buddy. Let's see if we can build him and roll him out. <laughs> I think he needs to be built on the F2 pad though, which means we're going to have to reassign some engineers. Is it the F2 pad? Yeah, because I'm trying to avoid using our 350 tonner because just the rollout time is dumb. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Okay, good. I gave it a prefix. Venus Orbiter Mark 33. That cannot be it. Was it S54? Hold on a second. I need to, I need to check something, because I just moved the file over. I really thought it was Venus Orbiter and just Venus Orbiter, but one of my select craft is Venus Orbiter Mark 33. Yeah, I guess that's it. Venus Orbiter Mark 33. That's 54. Dang it, it does go up on the big boy. Yeah, that would be it. Load. Part is missing. Oh, we just haven't unlocked it yet. So, sausage update. I await with bated breath. take a quick look yeah this is I used as much old tech as I could just to get this guy out the door for as little tooling as possible yeah only 20 grand in tooling skin of the sausage would reach 121,000 C at what point does pork ablate <laughs> What does the fat content of said pork need to be for that oil to heat up and sizzle and cook the whole thing? I think we've we've passed the point where it the is the pork going to be cooked? Yes. <laughs> Only three hundred and six parts. I know, right? I have toned things down significantly. Alright, let needs lunar exploration era. Oh god, that unlocks in like five days, but I can't build it. What's our build time? We don't know, because we need to reassign staff. That's assuming sphere of sausage because finding the ballistic coefficient of a capsule is hard. <laughs> you should just assume that it's going to be a wall of meat raining down. Let's put you at a reasonable level here. Uh, let's hit save. We can't build this until we're done um, researching the next thing. Rollout time is 26 days. But yeah, we need to reassign a bunch of engineers anyway. So let's take care of that. The primary function of this thing, other than take one or two new experiments, all the way to Venus is to... Uh... All right, our Venus lander is built on the F2 pad. Good. And our docking tart. Yeah, we're not building anything in Orbiter 1. So let's... Remove our Orbiter 1 staff and move them onto the 350 ton pad. How close to being done is our Zenith Blue for 2? That won't be done until 1203 1968, which is coming up pretty soon. So I think after this happens, then we'll move engineers over. We only have 51 days. Is that more than 51 days from now? Let's see, uh, November, basically got 30 days of November and 15 days of October-ish. That's 40-something days. God, that's going to be too close. That's going to be too damn close. 
Maybe the sausages are not hollow, but they have such a high fat content that's actually what burns in the engines. It's not kerosene after all. Could be, but we want some of that latent fat oil to heat up and cook the sausages all the way through so that they are warm and ready to eat when they, uh, when they impact the ocean. <laughs> it's all just so stupid. All right, so 101A, if we push that back, so that we can hit our Venus window. We can knock that out and have that whole thing done in like 90 days after launch. Let's pull 200 from here. Get them on task. Let's get back in the VAB and get that... Oh wait, we can't. Fuck! You idiot. That's what residuals are for. Fair enough. 10% residuals, that should be enough... Uh, oil to cook it. So ballistic coefficient is a ways off since said spherical sausage would reach 900 G's. Hmm. So there's very little chance of it being a sausage deployment and more like um, porkish rain. Can't build this yet because we have an unlock yet to happen. So we we need to reassign our engineers back to Gemini in full force until lunar air exploration is unlocked which is october 26th so <laughs> well then let's pull everybody off of this <laughs> where are we building what now Zenith Blue for two is at LC 101A. We need y'all at full force. And I guess F2 is building something, right? Yeah, another Venus lander test vehicle. So we'll give them the remainder for now. Close. What's our, oh yeah, we're gonna lose a stack of money. I thought I'd just fix... Oh, wait, no. It's because our funding is trailing off. So we're constantly bleeding money. And honestly, I could just scrap this and make some of it back. In hopes that we're not actually going to need it. I hate doing that, but yeah. Scrap it. 8800 bucks. Alright. Oh, hey, now we're going to gain money. Look at that. Boom. Ching. Done. Alright. Now then. Now we can start building stuff for real. Sausage. If the sausage entered directly in line with its velocity, that would be correct. <laughs> I mean, I guess it would. Maybe. I don't know. It's probably also tumbling. So at least that would, in theory, evenly heat the outside of the sausages. La sausage. All right. Tooling, let's knock that out. Tool all, we got plenty of credit to take care of that. Purchase all toolings. And take 101 days, but we don't have any engineers assigned. So let's uh, show hide management. Staff, staffing. At F2, we don't need any of these guys working currently until the rollout comes around. So we'll drain them. Nobody at the hangar. Orbiter 1 already has nobody. One fifty. Yeah, let's get these guys on task. 101A is building, and we wouldn't like them to continue to do so, but we'll just drop them by 100. Damn, which doesn't put us anywhere even near half strength at this. If I close this, does it update those numbers? It does not. Maybe if I... Show hide management still doesn't quite update, so we're gonna build it anyway. Save, uh, derp, derp. What else do I need to do? It'll ask me to unlock stuff, which we should have the unlock credit for. Wait a minute, warning vessel did not pass editor checks. Matt, uh, I'm at the wrong launch pad. There we go. Here we go. 70 days. Mm, unacceptable. That sucks real bad. <laughs> If 
five days of rollout. Well, now that we know where the staffing is, staff one uh, A. Let's go ahead. Let's pull everybody off of this and see what our build time looks like. If we can hit the window that I so graciously forgot about. All right, uh, 45 days. So no, it doesn't look like we're making it anyway. I want to double check, just to make sure. Maybe we can launch a week outside the window and have enough margin to make up for it. Who knows? Let's get you on the build list. Yep, unlock two parts for zero, spending 12.5 of our credit. Excellent, do that please. And added to the build list. We. I'm going to have to play with the ballistic entry heating calculator later to see how hot it is when it hits the ground. I mean, it lands in the customer's buns. <laughs> you know, we're 200k unlock credits. That's a lot for this point in the game. That's because I have not been unlocking anything. I don't know if it's good or bad. It, it's probably an indicator that I am not progressing my technology fast enough, which is 125% the case. <laughs> Uh, that'll be done 12.10. And uh, this is 12.8. Uh, We're two days behind on completion. Then there's going to be another week to roll it out. So hopefully launching off window isn't going to hurt too bad. Do we got any? Yeah, no. I need to reassign some engineers to do the rollout of the Venus lander but not for like another 40 days or so. So I guess we'll just manually time warp until we're about a week out and then we'll start our lander rollout. Did you unlock the Gemini SM fuel cells yet? Yes, yes I did. And they are on our updated version of our Gemini vehicle, which is the Zenith Blue. I should have called it the Zenith Blue Mark II for two. The Zenith, it's the Zenith Blue for two, bravo. And it is updated with uh, fuel cells. Yes, that is correct. All right, let's, yeah, let's get within about a week of our Venus window and then we'll reassign some engineers so that we can, yeah, Mars 3.0 batteries are almost empty. No, now they're back online. Why don't we, oh buddy. <laughs> I have done a very bad job of managing this stuff. Not log config. I don't want to know anything about you. Zenith blue for two Docker probe. Yeah, let's keep that one up. Navi sat net. You can go away. Uh, docking target. Wait a minute. Docker probe. Oh yeah, you are done and junked. Let's get rid of you. Neat. So isn't the hole in your unlock credit? Well, wait, wait, hold on. Neat. So that isn't the hole in your unlock credit. <laughs> I'll say the whole is, is that it is November 1968 and I haven't, I've done half of the Gemini program. That is where the whole exists. I'm, I'm really sorry I have to do management like this whilst y'all are here, because it's uh, Mars Lander. We don't need any updates from you and we won't be getting any because... Uh, your batteries have died long ago. Yeah, sudden craving for barbecued Smokies. Oh yeah, don't we all? <laughs> Man, I, I missed lunch today because I was doing work around the house. Uh, I am refinishing some doors, and that has taken me literally all weekend. <laughs> all right, uh, the rest of these, uh, let's let's just move on with our life. We've got a lot of time warping to stare at. Alright. Well, 20 days might be a little ambitious. 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. Alright. That's, that's a good place to be. Um, yeah, let's bring up... Nope. Not you. You. Uh, we need to get staff on the F2 pad. And we can... We will just pull them from 101A. What does that make our rollout time? Eight days. Perfect. 
get to work, fellas. It's okay to <laughs> blame Simev for the pain of KSC management. <laughs> Yet another if Cosmo check. <laughs> Don't we have enough of those? <laughs> have I not been punished enough? <laughs> All right, Venus Orbiter Mark III will be done 1210. And yeah, we can't make that go any faster, so here we are. Warp to complete. Yeah, losing money, and we will continue to do so. Cha-ching! All right, and we are eight hours from window. Let's go ahead and get this thing off the ground, shall we? Launch. <laughs> Had two barbecues this week. Oh, man. Uh, I went to a car show and barbecue last weekend, and I have not had barbecue since. I'm thinking I need to remedy that. Too bad KSP wasn't DRM'd into Steam, or it'd be as simple as finding out a Steam ID. <laughs> shame, shame. <laughs> All right. So, MechJeb Ascent Guidance, let's bring you up here, and where is a good place to look at, I mean, I guess we just do this, right? Going to Earth, an initial orbit of uh, 180 meters at uh, 28.55 degrees, we are bound for Venus with a... Final orbit, we're going to say 90 because that's where we want it to angle us. And we want our departure between year 19, not no, 1968, um, day 13, right? Plot it. That gives us departure 8 December. All right, so our ejection land. Longitude of ascending node, sorry, needs to be 284.49. Am I doing this correctly? 49, and that makes our total ejection delta V 3830. That should be well within margin. Uh, you missed the inclination box. You're right. Uh, tch -tch -tch. Wait, hold on, wait. Orbital inclination. What does that need to be? Uh, ejection inclination, should it be 34.95? Am I reading this correctly? Man, I hope so. Ejection angle. Oh, the initial orbit. Dang it, I thought I typed this in. Uh, what was it, 28.55? Plot it. Okay, so never mind. Let's hit current and make sure I did that right. Yeah, 28.55. Okay. Cool. So, god, dumb. <laughs> Is that all I really need? If I leave uh, departure 8 December 68, that's today-ish at 20. 12, injection longitude, 284.49, Tell me I've got this correct, chat. Please help me. I'm hopeless. <laughs> I mean, your TWP initial orbit parameters. Sorry, a long stream delay. Yeah, I have been... Wondering, I have I have it set for no stream delay, but it does it anyway. Because apparently it takes a while to buffer and ship it all out. That sucks. <laughs> Which means I'm gonna sit here with blank air for the next thirty seconds. So you could launch in thirty-four degree orbital inclination, but set the initial orbit to thirty-four point two. 
degrees to okay now yeah, no I reset that to current 28.55 so we should just be able to walk straight down the 90 and so I'm hoping that we have this all set up you know what I'm just gonna press go we've got this ah yeesh, yeesh, yeesh. why does that get reset all the time plot 180 uh, meter initial orbit, 180 kilometer, 28.55 degree. Final orbit at Venus, yes, days, great, 8 December, blah, blah, blah. Uh, psh, longitude of ascension, ascending note, 284.49, 284.49, 180, 180, 180.5. Yes, 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 we need to adjust this. Do we? Because that one should be oriented correctly so that we don't lose control, but we'll keep an eye on it just in case. I'm going to go, unless somebody screams at me not to. But boom, I'm also going to take a quick save. Quick saving done. Launch and uh, engage autopilot. Let's see how poorly this can go for us. <laughs> if not, we'll just come back and try it again. Because we really do only get just this one shot. There we go. Close alarm. Seven hours to go. If that thing starts to do turn, we just adjust this to zero. And then let it go. All right, final countdown. Ignition, green across the board, all engines running. There go the clamps. Let's go. Okay, and yep, it is uh, holding good, so we should have clear pitch authority. This is an excellent time to shift around some staff. Oh yeah, the F2 pad can lose basically everybody that's on it. Boom, boom. Hangar, no. Orbiter 1, no, not Orbiter 1. You're maxed out and we need you to be 101A. It needs to get some of its staffing back so that we can continue building Gemini and get that done uh, as quick as we can. That would be great. All right, yeah. Staying right on the prograde. I like it. Keep it up, sweetie. God help you if you break. <laughs> I would be so incensed. Hey, rockets off the pad. You're all fired. <laughs> Good job, everyone. Go to this other place and get back to work. No, you cannot watch. <laughs> Smoke has yet to clear and the pink slips are flying. Watch out, staff. There's a launch happening. Time for your fired letter. <laughs> Venus Lander has cleared the pad. Here's your pink slip. <laughs> you know, moments count. Every second they're working is the second we get closer to being done with that program on which we are not making any money. And we got facilities to maintain, okay? Alright, boosters clearing away. <laughs> Ooh, that was rough. Lots of coughing. Okay, I'm back now. Alright, next up will be fairing sup, but that's uh, a few minutes off from now. Uh, I love how I put all this work into installing all these pretty clouds and shit, and we've done every single launch at nighttime. 
I probably didn't install them correctly, and I have yet to go back and correct it. I honestly have not booted KSP on this machine in the last two weeks. I am, in fact, that that person. <laughs> I've been... I don't know. I played with uh, the designs of the ComSat thing, which I'm glad we're done on that now. But really, until this Venus program is done... <laughs> There's no point in canceling that program because it's money coming in that we can't supplement other way uh, in other ways. So there's that. And I think uh, can I manage more than three at a time anyway? And the answer is obviously no. That's how we fell so far behind on Gemini was me trying to do other things and be like, eh, we've got plenty of money coming in. We can unlock the Gemini pod whenever. Now reveal the time you ran KSP on that other machine. Uh, I want to say 8, 16 hours maybe, if that. I'll say maybe. I think I, I opened it up uh, on maybe three days for, and you know, at best four hours each. Amberzan, how's it going? Good to see you. Welcome back. Uh, going pretty well, honestly. Uh, we're broke. We're bleeding money. <laughs> we're a year behind on Gemini. And I'm going to go try to land on Venus. There's our, our little, our cute little lander. <laughs> Did I really never come back and scale down the avionics? Oh, good job, dummy. <laughs> I say while well, stuck in an ad and unable to listen. Oh no! <laughs> Alright, let's... Ooh! Hello! That was an interesting uh, staging event. Surely that won't completely screw up this entire mission. <laughs> Music Geekery, thank you so much for the raid. Welcome, raiders! How's everyone doing today? <laughs> Cosmo, get it big and books now. That, that enthusiastic staging. It was a, a little enthusiastic, a little a little stuck. Anyway, hi, Amberzan, how's it going? Now that you're here and you can listen, I'm going to say uh, welcome, good to see you. Things are going well, I'm broke, I'm bleeding money, I'm two years behind on Gemini, and I've decided to go land on Venus. I'm broke and broken, but still flying. Thank goodness for that uh, massive gimbal authority. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are a little less than two minutes from hitting orbit, and it looks like we'll have 4.5 kilometers per second remaining in the uh, X405 upper stage. So uh, we're we're looking good. Good, good. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. <laughs> we're getting there. That's what I'm just saying. The usual. Hello, how's it going, music geeker? Welcome. Again, thank you for the raid. This is genuinely an excellent shot in the arm for the program. I'm hoping. I'm hoping we can just knock this thing out right quick. Close the program, move on to one that gives a, a whole bunch of funding. So just, you know, some funding. Have you done Shitbox Mercury flyby? Not yet. I have not been able to take the Small Bodies flyby program yet. But uh, that's why I gotta knock out the Venus landing thing. And uh, I did complete the commercial... Comsat's application thing. That's only one slot. If I cancel it, I don't have. Any, I can't take anything to supplement the funding. So we're keeping it around until we're done with the Venus landing, and then we'll close them both. And that was going to be uh, the next thing I pick up was uh, small bodies flyby because I'm in no way prepared to do crude lunar. <laughs> Doing good at a productive world building session. So let me chill. Right on. Excellent. Choices, choices, and I'm so bad at choices, man. I'm <laughs> the least authoritative decider of things ever. Oh, hey, I can put my staffing window away. I'm done firing people now that the rocket's off the path. <laughs> they didn't get fired; they got reassigned. Let's be uh, let's be legitimate here. Flying minimum viable flyby probes around does seem like a good intermediate step. Agreed. Hey, we're in orbit. Set guidance, you can go away. Uh, advanced transfer to another planet. No, advanced transfer to another planet. Let's go pick our planet, shall we? 
There she is, Venus set as target. All right, let's click ASAP. That's 3.854, create node. Boom, I'll take it. And it's in 49 minutes. Do we have, oh man, I bet you I forgot to wrap this with MLI layers. That's all right. We got about a kilometer per second of excess Delta V that we're playing with now. So there it is. All right. Um, RCS to arm and execute next node, please. <laughs> At least that's what you usually do. Okay. I don't feel bad about my some half uh, half decision decision. This reassignment like the brand on a retirement. <laughs> Ooh, uh, that would be in violation of the NDA to talk about that <laughs> here at the CCSA. <laughs> Usually include some outer planet stuff on schedule to arrive some years after you drop the save. Hmm, interesting. Couldn't all the money from your taking the lunar program help you get ready for doing that? Yeah, probably. There's just a lot of things that need to be worked out to do it. And like, it's not, it's not. When I say I'm not ready to do crude lunar, it's because I haven't started plotting out designs. Um, and basically, like, we're going to need a whole new launch vehicle. We're going to need, you know, <laughs> there's all the things that need to be figured out, which is a lot of build time, which I, I tend to do uh, not while streaming. Um, just because I tend to like zoom way in and stare at tiny pixels as I try to make the, the little details line up really well and make things look kind of pretty and legitimate. <laughs> but I don't know, the, uh, the what to do about the next big launcher has been something I've been kind of arguing with myself with for a while. Like, do I really want to unlock a bunch of new engines or do I just want to build a much bigger version of our 350 tonner that has like four RDO uh, or four RD 108s at the core and like six to eight boosters running 107s and then I haven't done any of the hydrolox stuff so I don't get the benefit of the J2 and I've kind of done that intentionally this save wanting to do, go with more Caraloxy engines and whatnot so like there's a bunch of considerations to be made and a bunch of tech that I need to plot out for that's all like years away from being done because I just, well, that comes back to money. But a lot of it is just, I haven't started like doing the builds to prepare for it. So that's why I'm not ready to start. Boom. All right. And we're away. Good. All, everything is still within margin. We're making good time here. So I'll take it. I don't think I've ever had a Uranus probe arrive, despite two or three launched. <laughs> what do you need on your next big launcher? Uh, to get crew to the moon. EDMH and LOX proton engines, good. Hmm. Don't you get a pretty stiff penalty for launching crew on top of a big toxic field booster like that? Really nice Soviet booster engines is next step after the 108, 107. Hey, uh, YOLO. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight on CCSA Live, we'll land on the moon before Artemis. <laughs> Barely. It, we're going to be down to the hour, you know. <laughs> the suspension of, like, for all Kerbal kind. Who's going to get there first? CCSA or Artemis? <laughs> to 1968, we better start uh, saving up for that Apollo CSM now. Because holy hell, if Gemini was you know, 307 or 400 and something thousand, wasn't it? How much does that fucker cost? You thinking of a 700 ton launcher or something bigger? Ah, uh, good question. Uh, th these are things I have not plotted out at all. I have no idea. 2.5 meters per second off. Do not. You can go ahead and face to the node, but do not by any means use that last ignition to try to clear two and a quarter meters per second. You doof. Focus view, are we actually a right? Oh, 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 you need do nothing, friend. No, we don't have reverse, son of a biscuit. Uh, I guess I want you, well, you know what, there's, do I want to, I do kind of want to use the fuel left in this thing, like this fuel. There's plenty of HTP, it's just down here now. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, I guess we'll we'll let it dive in 
and if we can't go that way, we'll go the other way. Anyway, some kind of wacky super proton would be a lot of fun. Those engines are very spicy. Interesting. No idea what capsule lander combo we're going with. None whatsoever. I have not poked at it nearly enough. So it's something based on it's the RD two one five E one scale Soviet missile engine. Ooh. Yeah, see these are all things that I need to think about but haven't yet. I mean honestly, we could just go from here and we can totally touch this up on our own. This is pretty ding dang diddly good, man. Alright, let's get our probe deployed. Tunk. Oh, you dummy. Forgot to unlock the avionics. Activate. Activate. Pull ever so gracefully away and let's knock ourselves off to one side a little bit. So I don't know if there's much point in dialing this in just yet. No, no excessive decoupler force. Fork and finally. <laughs> Basically, just don't just spam 108s. There are more interesting, wacky options in... Are there? Yeah, there definitely are, and I need to spend some time considering them. But, you know, engines, very expensive. Research time, also expensive. Everything gets ungodly expensive. All right, let's get... You angled into the sun, please. Sun, um, up, execute. And then we'll try dialing something in. I mean, as long as we're not losing our encounter, we probably don't need to dial you in at all. Let's toggle back to you. Oh, did we lose comms? We did. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I could just light up the engine. No, no, no. <laughs> Shut down. Yeah. Nope, we need to go the other way. Uh, let's angle you to prograde, please. I would. It would be kind of nice if we could just get rid of this by disposal via Venus and be done with it. Who would have thought that when you don't clip half your spaceship into structural goop, you don't get knackered? <gasps> uh, I beg to differ, sir. <laughs> All kinds of clipping going on. And then that lander, you've seen the lander. R7 Centaur bust. Ooh. Hmm. In US upper stages without hydrolocks is a pain. It is. And we could toggle that. We could go with US boosters and Soviet upper stage, which is probably what I was going to do because, man, um, I do believe that I unlocked the. Oh, God. What? S. SD-5100, what becomes the RD-58 later on, I have that unlocked and paid for, and was planning on doing upgrades to all of my, everything using the 405H, but I'm like, no, that's cheating, then I'm using all Soviet engines, and that's not cool, bro. We're just going to go underneath Venus instead of into it, aren't we? Yep. Yep. Which way do we need to go? Ah, map view tilde. Which way do we need to go to put this into Venus? Ah, I can't. Maneuver node locked. Fine. <laughs> the meme will be all Soviet liquid engines and go and go down SRBs for boosters. Oh, <laughs> that would be fun. All right, we need to get a node set up so that we can do our. Correction maneuver will probably, since we're so dang close, I think we'll just do it at Venus, since we don't have a whole lot to correct for, to be real, real honest here. So let's put this node here, add maneuver, 157 days from now. I hope we're still solvent by then. It's probably going to be one of these things where we... Uh, we're going to be completely bankrupt and, I, oh man, oh, maybe we do want to do this a whole lot sooner. Or do we just want to, uh, instead of doing it by deceleration, let's just tip it inward like so, so it's not 100 billion meters per second. It's more like 20. 
man, I'd really rather land during the day. That should have been a thought that I had much, much earlier than this, because a nighttime landing at Venus takes forever and you don't get to see any of it. <laughs> 31 meters per second we can totally afford. Dial that in for the straight 90 we would like it to be. There we go. All right, and let's set our alarm. Add alarm for maneuver node. Uh -huh. Thank goodness we can move stuff. Yeah, um, give me 10 minutes of lead. That'd be great. Add alarm. Ta-da! Yay! All right, and we are 14 hours past our window. Yeah, because booster flying Venus, <laughs> booster flying by Venus is going to likely impact future spacecraft. Yeah, that's why we're trying to get rid of it. Get the Antares grib set with Soviet space magic engines glued to glorified Mormon fireworks. <laughs> Don't worry, Venus will be oriented differently when you get there. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Hopefully, we'll still be daytime landing. If you can afford a bit more DV, you could push it over to the day side. Well, let's see what it looks like when we're when we're showing up. <laughs> I I should plot a mid course, but honestly, I just wanted to get there with as little effort from me as humanly possible. Yeah, 157 days, that's not that bad of a wait. Oh, contract complete. What did we get done here? Uh, new crew duration record, first EVA, early comms network, three satellites, and achieve, yeah, program complete. Cool. We knew all of that. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna see if we can get our orbiter. The real problem is relaying comms from lander to Earth, indeed. Um, this little guy actually is still operational and has a high gain antenna. So if the landing is anywhere on, you know, this side of Venus, wherever that may be, or within, you know, that kind of circular range, this can relay comms pretty well. Uh, our other option needs to be rolled out to the pad. Well, it needs to finish getting built and then rolled out to the pad. So we got Two more days we can do that. We're going to launch off window a little bit by like a week. Does it also have spicy omni antenna? Yes. The lander only has spicy omni antenna. <laughs> like a 30, 30 or 32 dB gain. Venus should be two to four, two fourths rotations around the sun when it gets there. So it might be daytime. It might be daytime. It might be dead of nighttime also. All right, and uh, Venus Orbiter Mark 3-3 it will be done in two days. Your relay needs big Omni to talk to the lander. Mm -hmm. This also has a 30-some-odd dB gain. Let's take a quick check on that. I'm like 95% sure, so I just want to have a quick look or a dish you can dedicate to the purpose. That it does not have. Sorry, there was a, a, some beeping and I didn't know what it was, but it's okay. Yeah, the lander could talk to the, the polar orbiter in simulation land. We'll see how true that remains. I worry about degradation of the solar panels, so just a quick refresher. We've got this thing, and it does have a 35 dB gain UHF band antenna, which we'll now rank up to 5, because... Why the hell not? Close, we don't need to see you. So yeah, 35 dB gain antenna there, and then we also have this one for talking to Earth. We'll upgrade you while we're at it. Uh, yeah, also a 35 dB gain antenna. But I don't know if the text, if the comm center will be done with those upgrades by the time we get there, so I won't rely on gaining that down for any particular reason, so. There's that. Yeah, we got our two comms, so uh, I guess save edits drops us a percentage by upgrading our tech. Uh, fine. What's another day, right? Dishes talking to Omnis gets real painful. <laughs> it, this is, yeah, 100% true. I think the PE always ends up somewhere near the Terminator. Hmm. Interesting. All right, guess we warp to complete. God, we're still bleeding money. Ching, roll out. Three days. All right, warp to complete. All 
not sure where your pain lies exactly. My back mostly, and my knees. <laughs> Just hard getting things to talk to each other, and it, most of that is because I have no idea what I'm doing. Wait, that that alarm. All right, let's uh, let's get this out on the pad and let's get this figured out, shall we? Wonder how off kilter this will need to be, but we should have gobs of excess delta V. Like we should just have a mountain of it. That's why we're launching on the big boy. I haven't flown one of these in a while, so <laughs> it's a, a delightful rush job, I must say. And after this, we can get all of our people back working on our Gemini, so that we can do docking and stuff. One dish and one omni is always better than two omnis. Two omnis just natively talk as long as they're on the same frequency, like the same, excuse me, the same band. You know, UHF or VHF or S or X or whatever, they just talk. It just works. You don't have to tell it to look at something. It just does it. It just happens, and that's what we like. Ascent guidance. You are go and transfer window planner. Let's get you sorted out. Kerbal alarm clock, you can go away. You can go away. All right, so our initial orbit of 180 kilometers at uh, 28.55 degrees. We'd like to go to, no, Venus, and we would like this to 28.55 degrees with a final orbit of, we'll just say 250 kilometers departing sometime between today and tomorrow. Is it day 10? I guess that's since it's, that's our default minimum, we'll just say day 12. Uh, plot. 10 December at naught. So our longitude of ejection is 284.17. And it worked last time, so we're going to do it again. The ejection delta V is 3832. That should be well within spec. Depends on the gain of the dish. Yeah, those three extra clicks. It, is it only three clicks? Man. Why am I so bad at stuff? <laughs> if it is really only three clicks, then I have been misappropriating my clicks the entire time. All right, and insertion delta V 3291. Wow, yeah, we don't have that, but we won't be in a circular orbit anyway, so that doesn't matter. All right, and uh, launch to longitude of ascending node and engage autopilot. God, I hope our staging is good. I guess we'll find out, won't we? Works better when you get the fancy bands. X, S. Is it A band? No. Mm -hmm. As long as it's S band or higher. Should be good. Yeah, we're... Nope. <laughs> UHF? Are you talking about for dishes? S band dishes are just pain. Are they? Oh, less than S band dishes. Mm-hmm. Yes, like uh, all the UHF dishes that I am currently using. So sorry. Oh, so I think the one that I have in... Oh, you dumb son of a bitch! Fuck me. Engine fucking failure. And of course, it's uh, one of the boosters. Fuck me. Alright, so we... We what? We go to recover vessel and then repair failures? Are they repaired now? Two meter VHF dish is pretty sweet. Man, at least this guy has the budget and the LV capacity for a real radio. <laughs> Are they fixed now? How does this work? Check the damn KCT window. Okay, warp to uh, repair. Nine hours? Ding. Hey, all right. Okay, thank you. That's what I needed to know. And so now I need to activate engine, I suppose. And now I need to... 
Uh, it's been nine hours. Is it worth going through all of this again? Plot it. Do, 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 do. Oh, um, abort that. Longitude of setting node is now 283.78. I hope I'm correct on that. All right. I need to wait for a pair. Look in case. See, optimize everything else. You don't have margins for the important shit. Yeah. Planning and stuff. All the things I'm bad at. Display there is not wrong, but not correct. Huh? Most of the dishes are just omnis and UHF VHS. God. Okay. I think so. All right. I'll launch to a launch land. That's 14 hours from now. Good enough for me. Uh, I guess we can make sure all of this came across correctly. 283.78. Yep. Okay. Engage autopilot. No more failures, please. Well, there's our pretty ish clouds. We finally get to see them, y'all. Hey! <laughs> Seeing the tooltip if it's wide enough just to be an omni. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. All right, once we get this off the pad, I have to go refill my water, or I'm going to lose my voice in very short order. It'd be completely pointless. It'd be hilarious to have a deployable ELF antenna. <laughs> okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Ignition? You've got to be fucking kidding me. For fuck's sake. <laughs> For fuck's sake. <laughs> Repair failures. Jesus. <laughs> Ten hours to fix this one. God has just decided we are not going to Venus with this thing today. <laughs> Thunderbirds are not go. Hmm. What if you build RP-1 submarines? <laughs> you get very familiar with that repair window and using six RD-200s. Oh my god. Wow. Okay. Uh, we'll say day 12 and day 13. Plot 283.51. 283.51. Everything else is correct. We'll launch in 13 hours. Uh, engage autopilot. <sighs> Six RD200s, no wonder. Imagine having to roll back plus roll out twice. I know, that is a I, that is a, a lovely feature, and I love that we can fix blown engines on the pad now. Thank goodness, that was a stroke of brilliance, and I greatly appreciate it. All right, who wants to... Who wants to uh, we've had a failure on, we'll say, engine three and uh, engine zero. So you might want to take a bet on which one's going to fail this time. Nine seconds. Get your bets in. Hand card with more opportunities to blow up with a mistake. <laughs> Mr. Mark, how's it going? Welcome. Yes! Green across the board, all engines running. Now all they have to do is finish running. Engine two. <laughs> For now. <laughs> RP-1 clustered 405's first stage. Oh my gosh. Legends <laughs> running for now. Truth. Fair. Currently using the clustered single Vanguard engines from Viking. Oh, buddy. Alright, I gotta get some water, y'all. I will be back in one minute. Um, I don't know. If an engine fails, an engine fails. See you all in a second.
I have returned. Thank you for being patient. How was that mistake? The I was just two XLR tens in a shroud. Oh my gosh. The four five is both unreliable and unreasonably expensive. <laughs> Meh. Hmm. Four five is an embiggened Carolox XL ten. Ah. Interesting. Didn't know that. All right. Well, we are thirty-two real seconds, which is about forty-five. Experienced seconds from Booster Sep. Once again, a glorious nighttime launch. Of course it would be. Cause of course it would be. Because you're trying to go anywhere and it's December, so of course it's going to be at night. And oh, our pitch down is pitching down. Oh, well, we're only at 32 kilometers altitude. God, this thing takes. It feels like it takes forever because frame rate is garbage. It, in all actuality, has been a minute and 51 seconds since we left the pads. Speaking of which, I'm to hand out some reassignments. Not building anything here anymore, so all of y'all, you're fired. Yeah, 101A, F2, no, we need, no, it is 101A that we need to staff up. All staff go to 101A. Katunk. Boosters. Clear and away. Excellent. Alright. 101 is now operating at peak operations. Uh, I think our docking target... No, our docking target was on uh, one of these. So we'll bring them back up to full staff. And we got 175. We'll just dump them back on the F2 pad. Because why not? Cool. Done with that. New PC when? <laughs> so nice of you to offer to purchase one. Um, I love that. DM me, and we'll talk about uh, when you can just, I don't know, ship over parts to me. And I will graciously assemble them for you. I feel like I should have some kind of participation in this. Uh, I'd like to keep my case, really, but, you know, mainboard PC, or mainboard, motherboard, processor, graphics card power supply is probably still in good enough shape. Uh, could probably use a, a RAM upgrade, why not, while we're at it. So, you just box up those things. I bet shipping costs more than the parts are worth. <laughs> well, I'm not shipping anything. You're shipping them to me. If you're sending me upgrade stuff, it won't be hard for anything to be an upgrade. This is an old 7700K and a 1060. <laughs> So, you know, <laughs> I'll say, really, if I could just get my hands on, like, a, I don't know, a 3060 even would be a worthwhile upgrade and make a lot of things run better, but, you know, meh. <laughs> an i9 would be, any i9 would be an upgrade from this thing. All right, fairings. Whoosh. Hello, what the fuck are you doing? I'm so confused. I can always sell an organ or two. I... 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 What the fuck just happened? Our core stage was still burning, right? Yeah, yeah. That thing had at least another minute of runtime. That gives hot staging a new meaning. <laughs> staging, my beloved! Mechchep, what the fuck is wrong with you, bro? I'll say, yeah, and it, it's gonna want to light our... Oh, God. How long ago did I... Oh, bloody. <laughs> yeah, but they, that, that... That doesn't relight, friends. This is a problem. Falcon one moment. <laughs> came back up and gave us just a little kiss. What the fuck, Mech Jab? I'm honestly very, very, very confused on why... KSP hates this flight so much, to the point where I... We have to revert. Like, we have to. <laughs> Oh, 
I... What the fuck was that? <laughs> Computer error. Mechjub just decided, ah, uh, fuck yourself. I mean, let's take a quick... Oh, I should have looked over... No, I couldn't. can't look over the staging. After the stage has been staged, we can't unstage the staging. So let's take a quick preview of our staging. Somebody cut the fuse for the second stage. <laughs> How could they have? I fired them all! <laughs> Uh, yeah, like, I'm willing to bet fairings are here in their own stage, and here's this other staging. Like, dude, what the shit? Hmm. <laughs> or a would-have-happened-to-Starliner if pilots were on board in its last flight moment. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <sighs> are we back on day one now? Venus, 100 kilometers. Yeah, it doesn't. Nope. This is the wrong field. Uh, 28.55. Initial orbit, 180 kilometers. Yeah, plot it. Mm, 10 December. Okay. So we at yeah, 284.17. I hope I have this right. Yeah, 10 December 68. That should be today. Ejection 284.17. Let's come out of all these boxes and take a quick save. Just in case. <laughs> you know, that might explain it. <laughs> All right, launch to longitude of ascending node, three hours. This sounds like our first go. Engage autopilot. All right, are we going to have the same engine failures? Or are we going to have new and interesting engine failures? Maybe I'll just manually stage, because F you, Mech Jeb. The fuck is your problem? <laughs> Let's hear it for engine three! <laughs> Coming way late to the party with I don't feel like lighting up today. Somebody place the dynamite a lip. There it is. For fuck's sake. Cover repair failures. <laughs> Is it a booster engine? Yeah, we'll call that one engine three. Way to go, Ampersand. <laughs> I don't have numbers on this one like I did in my last save. That would have been handy. <sighs> Warp two. Warp two. Thank you very much. Activate engine. <laughs> Between day 11 and day 11, plot 283.78, launch, engage, all right, last time it was the core engine for the second failure, <laughs> anyone want to bet? Did you haul some 56 experimental parts out of a museum? Allegedly. <laughs> Only 222 days left to paint. Neil and Buzz the Moon. Yay! I mean, if we don't have to bring them back, <laughs> that that's possible. I could probably put a crew on the surface of the moon with this thing, but that is where they will die. <laughs> hey, all engines running. Yay! Clamps off! 
Uh, the next 15 minutes of our lives are spent re-watching the same thing we just watched. I had the sick sad hope that we would be able to at least do Gemini docking today, but we'll need at least an hour to do that, and this is the next 25 minutes of our life. Maybe we can get it off the ground and get it set up for docking. Maybe. We'll see. Four times time warp goes brrr. Four times time warp goes failure. And then time to glue one guy to a chair <laughs> to a direct descent lander. Oh, they have to land on the moon. I thought we just had to get them to the moon. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, you want to put an intact, alive human with a heartbeat on the surface of the moon. That, that's a little, that's a bit much. You don't need the glue to stop him bailing out. <laughs> Yeah, so I guess, uh, what's the sheer strength of zip ties? Don't worry, I've got to build the thing by next week's sim. I'm going to add a 300-day training regime for a chair. <laughs> it, it fails the if Cosmo check. Oh, I, I just put them in a, in a Gemini and let them gallivant to the moon. They'll be dead before they get there, and they won't survive the impact, but they will have gotten to the moon, their corpses at least. And in the spirit of things, isn't that what really matters? You send a crew to the moon on this, a lander or another, a sent module on another, a return vehicle and more than one launch. It could very well be done. I'll say the last the last playthrough on uh, RP1 I did before LCMP, that's how I did it. I sent a lander out to the moon and then parked it in orbit, and then I sent a crew out and they rendezvoused with it, landed on the moon, came back to their vehicle, and then went home. So it was a two-launch lunar orbit rendezvous plan, and it was stupid. <laughs> it sucked on every level. <laughs> to be fair, you'd need about that much to successfully fly a surveyor, <laughs> surveyor <from> launch air. <laughs> you don't fly a launch air surveyor. You pray the computer works. <laughs> you take the NyQuil, and you hope that you wake up. In the lunar orbit with anything smaller than 700 tons is a dubious proposition, indeed. That's why I would do 0% survival direct descent. <laughs> Inserting into an orbit is just a waste of time. You want to put as many blackout areas on the flight plan as humanly possible. <laughs> I'm sending a whole astronaut along when I pay for a whole guidance system. <laughs> Redundancies are just extra mass. Look, if you can't twitch reflex your way into a direct descent lunar landing, then you don't deserve to be an astronaut. Done the whole Apollo stack lunar orbit rendezvous clean on nothing but Saturn 1Bs. Oh man. <laughs> Damn. That is brave, Jeff. You have patience. Alright, booster flame out. Boosters clearing away. Alright, now we have a stop in stage 7 in effect, so Mech Jeb cannot physically F this up. Or so we assume. <laughs> Mech Jeb decides now to become sentient. I fuck my programming, I do what I want. We're gonna hot stage, because fuck you, that's why. Did once fly Apollo direct descent off like a 5,000 ton rocket. Holy shit. <laughs> I'll say, yeah, wouldn't that necess that necessitates carrying the heat shield down to the surface of the moon, and that thing is chonk and heavy. It sucks immensely. I love it. <laughs> Damn right. That was when I turned the S4B into a space plane for tanker flights. Huh. 
Magjib cannot physically have this on. Magjib, hold my beer. <laughs> mm-hmm. A minute 54 seconds, I have to manually... Well, Magjib's going to do one more stage to clear the fairings when we're at the appropriate altitude, and then... Uh, I will be manually staging everything else from here on out. Yeah, we still had, like... This is about the point where Mechjeb staged last time. And we still had almost two kilometers per second left in that stage. You... F you fucker, Mechjeb. <laughs> you absolute fucker. I love how sometimes this game just really likes to just... Do something dumb to test me. Oh, hey, while we're at it, let's turn this thing on. Invalid situation, of course, but it, it will be able to radio something back, we assume. <laughs> at some point, it's going to collect some data on its way out. Uh, did, did I pack any other sciencey bits on you? Nope. Wow, I sure dropped the ball on that one. But I guess I sent the rest of them already, and that might have been the only new one we had unlocked. Or is there one down here that I've just forgotten about? I thought there would be. I thought I placed a bunch of new sciencey bits on here. Yeah, the quadrupole mass spectrometer. 91 days. We'll go ahead and queue you up now that you're in space. Uh, we'll take a look at the sciencey bits a little later. I have to actually stage something here. Kerbalism menu, you dummy. <laughs> I am a dummy. I've got 22 seconds before I have to push buttons, Simav. You know I need to, like, warm myself up for this. i got to get prepared. Lord knows if I see something sparkly, this whole flight is screwed. Please learn to use it. Uh, flame out, staging... Beauty ring will fall away. There we go. All right, now I need to keep my eye on this tank. Kerbalism menu. This one. Filter by current vessel. Mass spec three. How do I turn it on? AWS. That one should be running in telemetry analysis. So I only have the two that I've already turned on. Necessitates nothing because now I don't need to learn how to use that. Oh, do I not have RCS on this stage? Oh no, I think. Is this the 405H or the H? 405H2. The H2. So we do have another ignition on this thing, and we will use it to start our. Learn? You must be new here. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Ouch. <sighs> I mean, yeah, it's funny because it's true, right? <laughs> I am quite stupid. But I guess that's what, uh... I don't know, is that what keeps people here? <laughs> it's like, if this idiot can do it, I can be a master at this game. <laughs> he can still fly by Venus, and he's a dumbass. My coffee is cold and almost empty. It's real, real unfortunate. It means he only gets grumpier from here on out. Anyway, it's almost time for me to hit a button again. This will be the last button I have to press before... You know what? Let's drag those down here so we have them. Katunk? Oh, come on. Good. Uh, we're clear of our EFTs. Discord is designing a launch vehicle for their world building project. Oh, interesting. Hmm. May end up being, in setting, the single worst rocket ever designed. <laughs> My coffee's been empty for an hour, and I've picked the tank drink three times then. So the guy isn't. That is the worst. Be like, ah, oh yeah, I have coffee. No, I don't have coffee. That's right. I forgot that I don't have coffee. I thought I had coffee, but I don't have any coffee. It's infuriating. Am 
like actually physically infuriating. <laughs> We're going to use the excess delta V from uh, our orbital insertion to kickstart our way to Venus. One hundred and thirty tons in the ground, about a dozen different nineteen fifties missile <laughs> SRPs welded together. Forty-five kilograms to lower orbit. Nice. Hey, <laughs> that doesn't sound too bad. Oh, uh, we have finally, finally, finally made it to fucking orbit. Yeah, Venus set as target. ASAP is 3.849 kilometers per second. Not bad. Create node. Patunk, 50 minutes. And uh, execute next node, please. Oh, RCS to arm. Quick save, dummy. Good call, Rocket Goose. Thank you. <laughs> the American Space Program. <laughs> Designed by and for a nation best described as Texan Super Korea. <laughs> the non democratic Republic of Texas. I mean, at least they got a clear spot they can launch from, right? Brownsville is somewhat legitimate. Alright. 50 minutes of lingering means we're going to have somewhat of boil off. I'm not sure what's a worse idea. V2 with wings. <laughs> the V2 with the hypersonic motor. Nah. <laughs> Very democratic. A scary radical nation in setting by virtue of being completely normal liberal Democrats. <laughs> Terrifying. Alright, once again, back to I have to manually press the buttons, but, uh, you know. Whatever, 3.8 kilometers per second. We actually have it within margin just on our uh, 0109 stage, but if you have 720 meters per second you can use, why not use it? Just to make sure. <laughs> you know, last thing we need is loss of performance or some other dumb thing happening that Fs everything else up. We've certainly seen uh, our fair share of that this stream. <laughs> Yeah, those clouds just don't quite look right, and I really wonder what I did to F those up. Uh, I'll try to take a look at it tomorrow instead of doing my homework. It's my usual MO. <laughs> Alright, now we're going to start the ullage. Huh. One seems to have ulaged in, the other one doesn't seem to want to cooperate. You didn't fail, did you? There we go. Yes, please gimbal all to high hell. I... What is it about those engines that do that? I don't quite understand, but okay. I think the clouds look alright. They look alright. They look better than they did, but they're certainly not like the other ones that I've seen on other people's stuff. Alright, solid light on the 0109, and we are shipping off officially. We gotta keep an eye on our balls so that we know when to ditch them. Time to get cut in half by robots and hell divers too. Oh, nice! I have been thinking about playing that, but it requires me to spend money on it, and I <laughs> I keep spending money on race car. It's also why I can't upgrade my PCs because I chose instead race car. Which, speaking of which, if uh, any of you did not see the update that I posted in the cars. Uh, updates section. The thing where I talk about race car in the Discord. Um, a buddy of Captain came over and interviewed Captain about the race car, and if y'all would go watch it and maybe give him a sub so that he can go compete in the no-name nationals here in Missouri later this year, uh, I'd take it as a personal kindness. Uh, everything's in the Discord. 
But uh, yeah, no real race car updates. We haven't done any actual work to it, just some fit and finish. I'm cutting and carving mounts for the uh, the cool suit cooler, which is just a cooler that I'm planning on knocking holes in with a pump. <laughs> or for a pump. But yeah, that's really, uh, that's all we need. We might have a fourth driver lined up, which would be awesome. We're going to hang out with him a few times and see if he's a cool enough dude, but... Yeah, that's all I got on that on that front. Other than we're definitely not racing at Tulsa, or at Hallett, outside of Tulsa this year. We're going to try to pick that one up next year. That was more of a scheduling thing with everyone than a car thing. So uh, our next race, or our first race this year, will be at uh, Autobahn Country Club in Joliet, Illinois, in July. I will probably talk a whole lot about that as things get closer. <laughs> Spread some managed democracy. <laughs> Light one, the subsequent spin will haulage the other one. <laughs> I'll say the gimbal on those 405H is actually enough to where that stage can function with only one engine running, and it can still aim pretty true. So if that one had failed, I was just going to go ahead and manually light it up. Subscriber Limited No Name Nationals isn't usually super enforced. They've let smaller channels compete in the past. Good to know. that He is uh, less than 100 of the 500 they like you to have. So he would like a, a little bit of a nudge. <laughs> to maybe be closer to at least halfway. Clink, balls are clear. And the last 900 or some odd meters per second are, uh, should be easy pickings. Should be easy, easy pickings. I am actually also going to move our gamma arrest engine up one, just so we don't accidentally use it when we don't need to. Limit is just to prevent you from starting a YouTube channel just to come to the event, which is ironic because that's exactly what him and his daughter did. But I think they legitimately want to be there for the cars and the racing, and not just like he's not a I want YouTube clout kind of kind of person. He's way too old for that. <laughs> and his daughter is just helping him out by doing like editing and stuff. Like she's not really even on the channel. One meter per second. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, let's abort node execution, but go ahead and face into it. We're closer with this one than we were on our last one, so let's see how well this turned out for us. Oh, yeah, we need that one meter per second because we're way the hell off on over here somewhere. Yeesh. With the... I'll just hold the H key for a while. Ugh. I need that management one where I can vent fuel. Oh man, I'm increasing the requisite delta V because we're still spinning in the appropriate direction. Or, okay, numbers going down. That's all I need to see. Nope, now it's going back up. Son of a biscuit. So, angle it in, angle it in. Wow, that is uh, hurting our cause more than anything. I think we need to face the opposite way. Might have trouble otherwise. The no-name guys want YouTube people to start car stuff and not the usual car guys doing YouTube. Oh, that is interesting. I did not know any of that, honestly. Yeah, hmm. This uh, one meter per second that we need is uh, not actually the case. I think our overshot may have been a vast undershot based on how fast this is ticking by. But we're going to fizz warp through it and we're going to use up as much of this RCS propellant as we can. Namely all of it before staging out and uh, correcting again uh, with the RCS on our orbiter, our orbital insertion stage, which should have just gobs and gobs and gobs of RCS propellant. Yeah, it's a good thing we... Oh, it's a good thing we got lots of RCS, and now it's all gone. 
<laughs> and I honestly, I need to face the other way, didn't I? Yep. All right. So let's take a quick save before we stage and then undo all of our hard work by staging. Yeah. Would you look at that? <laughs> We don't have much choice. Oh, we're in fizz warp. So let's just keep leaning on it. Let's say car guys, you two. I mean, establish race teams. I already have a fan base following, starting a channel and applying for an event. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, say so this is definitely not that. This is a guy who likes his classic Mustangs. And I believe he also has a Maverick. Um... Yeah, he's just he's an old car guy. He just likes cars and wants to go racing a little bit. And I think No Name Nationals is more his kind of racing than like Lemons would be. We tried. <laughs> All right. So honestly, I think we need a little more pro grade in this. That gets us to there. Take a little bit of prograde out of it, adjust that angle, and see if we can't just walk this in. Is that pushing us across the far side? Almost, but for 27 meters per second. And then what we'll come across for another mid-course later on is probably going to be just fine. Let's get these things deployed a little bit. And we're still in fizz warp because I'm an asshole. And an extend antenna. I did a pretty crap job of making that look legitimate, but we're here now. So, okay. Gone a few times. It's more of a YouTube collab event than pure racing. Interesting. Very fun. Less competitive. Yeah, I think that less competitive makes sense as to why he wants to go give it a try. Because he probably doesn't want all, like, I don't know. There's a lot of machismo assholery around some of the more competitive. Like, that's why we wanted to race Lemons and not Champ Car. Chump Car. Is because it's just it's it's basically the same thing, shitbox racing, but chump car. There's a lot more, um, like people are there to race and they're there to be racers. And I don't know. It's a much more I don't, machismo is not really the right word, honestly. But like the competition is more competitive. Man, it's taking us a long ass time to do this 26 some odd meters per second. Be real honest here, I should probably check my fuel. Mm hmm. Yeah. We're taking helium from a different tank, or taking HDP from a different tank, sorry. And this would have benefited greatly from uh, upgrading to arazine and nitrogen tetroxide. <laughs> But for how much that uh, delta V meter is going down versus how much helium we're consuming, I don't know if this is actually going to be a thing or not. Or if I should bring online the thrusters from the probe itself. Those thrusters are itty bitty and they're not really going to help us do very much at all. So I think maybe we cancel this and we plot it out to a mid course instead. So, all right, we are, where are we? We're here. <laughs> is it just me, or is our orbit line not, oh, okay, it's just, it's kind of hidden. We're here, that's, that's our impact, straight across, 90 degrees about here, add maneuver. Let's try to do this someplace else. That's why I said drag and drive the community. It does Rocky Mountain Race Weeks. 
Sick wheel. When building a car that can do a couple thousand miles of street miles and a few quarter mile passes is hard. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, this is so much worse. That's going to be wow. Yeah, that uh that mid-course 24 meters per second buys us that. So I think honestly if we just uh I don't know, stay the dang course. Let's hit kill rotation before it starts to go all cattywampus on us. Ay ay ay. Mid course good for inclination changes, not so good for course changes. I don't know, maybe we plot it out here at our solar app our heliopsis. Yeah, so now it is retrograde that we need. Okay, that is looking much, much, much more respectable. Now I think we can get... Oh, man, or do I want this to be polar after all? Now we're still over what we were, but it was still... Ah, yeah. Angle. Uh, let's get you a little more polars just so we can, in fact, get to where we need to be. That's 40 meters per second, but that gets us in about what we want it because it's hopefully it'll be offset 90 degrees from our other orbiter and give us much better uh, at the ascending node, maybe. Um, yeah. We got time. Let's not jump out of the whatever view. Let's cancel that. Where uh, I think our ascending node is where we impact it, or where we cross SOI. No, we're not here. We're because yeah, it's not showing us any node, anything's. <laughs> Uh, that's uh, and we tried at 90 we tried at 60 maybe we try now the closer we get the heart well it, most of it is a prograde maneuver so the faster we're going yeah there's our ascending node <laughs> which means our descending node is behind us in our orbit currently so that's that's what we got them's our choices uh, where did I leave that stupid node seriously where did I leave it there it is. Yeah, that got real expensive real fast. So let's... Back this up in our orbit and do it as soon as we can. No, 299 days, my asshole. Sorry, y'all. This is infuriating I know because I'm real bad at doing this let's do it in three days nope stop, stop switching views you doofus focus view Eleven meters per second to correct in, and uh, okay. I think this might be our best-ish bet. Ah, come on, give me the stinking node. Whoa, too much, too much. Okay, purple noodle auto optimizer op. Absolutely. I like to optimize my own noodles. Yeah, 36 meters per second. This gets us in not at all where I'd like to be. That's more like it. Yeah, that's that's good enough. 35.7 meters per second in three days. I will take it advanced. Uh, sun, what are we looking at? 
up and execute, please. Turns out we don't have a whole lot of fuel, so I don't know if we're actually going to be able to optimize on this, uh, if we're going to be able to get that close. But as long as we can get into a good orbit and it, you know, we can stay there and relay comms for a while, I'll be okay with it. Oh, we're still in fizz warp mode. Yay! And 623. Do I want to try? I think we're going to try to do this correction because it's only three days out and we don't have anything else really coming up. Yeah, it'll take three days to recondition the pad. That's uh, that's good to know. <laughs> How long until... Blue for two is done? Not until next year. On the 31st. Yeah, we managed to push that back uh, long enough. All right, so let's go ahead and warp to our maneuver node and we'll get this knocked out right quick. Probably should have drug it a little sooner. Maybe I could have gotten it back down to 20 something odd meters per second. <laughs> <laughs> but we can point at it, we can set the throttle, and we can fizz warp, and we can hope to goodness that it's enough to get us there, right? Because it might not be. <laughs> oh, gosh, and tell me we're charging our batteries at this kind of altitude. Oh, God, how about we come out of time warp? Yeah, we did. All right, 19 hours to go. That's fine. Maneuver planner. Um, I'm actually going to put you away for right now. How's our batteries looking? Electric charge topped off and staying full. Excellent, because I think I left these panels optimized for uh, Mars because I'm stupid. Let's get angled into the node. It might take 19 hours to do this. Well, honestly, I think the sooner we do it, the better. Man, y'all. Yeah, I made these thrusters tiny because they're just supposed to be positional. Thinking like, oh, we'll get dialed in and it'll be fine. We'll go straight to Venus and then we'll fire up this engine and everything will be okay. And look how well that turned out for us. But, yeah. <laughs> it's about as well as things can go. 119 liters of helium. I think though these tanks are the same size. No, you only had 41 liters. So we actually have a metric crap ton more fuel up there. So maybe, maybe, maybe we stage in these thrusters and let them use some fuel to help us out. One, it will lighten the load. Will help us turn more quickly. Maybe they'll help us uh, dial out some of these, make sure. Yeah, okay, good. That engine is not active. Uh, and ready yet, get set, burn baby burn. No idea if those thrusters are actually helping us, but it's a thing. It's a mood. <laughs> I knew, do know that those four tiny thrusters working their absolute hardest are not doing a whole hell of a lot of good for us. Where else are you pulling helium from? Tell me you guys are feeding off the thrusters that are down here. That would mean... Yeah, wow. Okay. That worked out well. Does that also mean that these thrusters are going to feed off of... Yeah, they sure are. Now we're pulling just from these tanks. And lord, oh lord, we have... <laughs> we're not making much of a dent, are we? I think that means they're also pulling HTP from our from our orbital insertion stage, which is super forking interesting. We should be monitoring this because uh, 19 hours ahead of the node, we might actually walk out of this with a little bit more efficiency than the node requires, but honest to God, probably not. Yeah, we've depleted like half of our helium. More than. Uh, uh, 
come on, please get there with enough for us to reorient into the sun and then orient into our node when it comes time to light. Oh, I guess. No, we just need enough to ullage the dam engine. Gimbal on Gamma will get us pointed in the right way. <laughs> so enough to reorient into the sun and then enough to kick us into a spin before we have to light our, our capture burn. Ooh, sub 100 liters of helium remaining. This is going to be close. Close to close-ish. And I think we need to pump whatever... Oh, all the helium we have is already north. Son of a bitch. Mm. 60 liters remaining. We definitely need part of this orbit within comms range. 50 liters. And 45 liters. Shut it down. That's as close as we're going to get today. Yeah, 100 kilometers, that was not going to be very much fun. I guess we'll try to insert here. Let's see what this will buy us, actually. And uh, get your ass back into the wind, please. This maneuver node needs to be 2419. And 25. So that puts us, uh, yeah, okay. Now, if only these were actually lined up, then this satellite has coverage. This one will have coverage on the other side. And that could be useful-ish. Right? Right. 138 days, let's set the alarm. Add alarm, maneuver node, 138 days. That is for our orbital insertion. So I would like maybe two hours of lead. Add alarm, please. Thank you. And, of course, the note is walking because reasons, but at least it's around the same time, and we should have more than enough fuel to get to where we need to be. I think all the helium that we have on this craft is up there. We should probably dump out some of the HTP to replenish what we lost to make sure we actually still have that much Delta V, right? 171, so that needs like 10 more liters. You have exactly 10 liters. <laughs> out, stop. 5.48. I would. Oh, I should have done them at the same damn time. It's 4.63. 5.48 liters, right? Did I get that right? 5.48, 5.48. Yay! We still have balance. Fantastic! And we gave a little bit of our fuel back. Who cares, right? Excellent. All right, uh, panels are into the sun. Uh, node is set. Things will be a little more interesting than I care for, but um, that part's done. Back to the Space Center, I suppose. yippee ki -yay. So, uh, do we have enough time to do Gemini stuff? Maybe we can get to the launch. Maybe we can get it launched. We'll probably have to do the rest of the rendezvous next week. Yeah, 138 days and 146 days for the lander. Really? Okay, well, I mean, that's good. The lander will show up after the orbiter has orbited. So we can warp to complete here. Yeah, warp to complete here. And lunar rated power tech generation will take us till uh, 0108. And this will not be ready until 0131. So how's our money doing? Well, we're making money again. That's interesting. Uh, let's ramp up our construction on this little guy a little bit. Plus 241, so we can go up a little bit more. Plus 10. I should probably be banking this money because our funding is going to continue to dwindle. But lunar rated power generation, that'll help with something. It'll help us spend more damn money.
Z is blue for two. 0131. Let's check on our astronauts, actually, if they are ready. Uh, training? Yep, Julia, our two are ready to go. Let's get them, well, trained. Uh, mission Gemini. Boom, boom. Take 90 days. God, I keep forgetting it takes 90 days and not 30 days. Son of a bitch. I'll finish on April 9th. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Fine. Be that way. Start training. Excellent. Fine. Oh, man. We're going to... All right. Dial you back. <laughs> uh... It's awesome to be so poor all the time. Maybe install some of those lunarated solar panels in the VAB and lower the power bills. <laughs> yes, that's what we need to do. Ding. All right, that's done. Uh, I guess our training isn't going to be done training since the odds of them getting the moon are, well, you know, well. <laughs> Who cares? They'll, they will be fine. And we'll be at Venus in 93 days. Yeah, minus 3.9. God damn it. Dink. We'll just keep delaying it as long as... We'll drag it out as long as we can so that we can have money. Uh, yeah, March 23rd, 1969. I guess we don't have really much else going on, do we? Are there any... Like, do I want to take any dumb... No, oh, Venus Orbital Science Probe. Why the fuck didn't I take this contract? There have been 900 things that we're going to get for any... We're, we will have done this anyway. But launch uh, a new vessel. I wonder if it'll let us get that on our new one that gets there. But no, that's cheating because then I have to force the contract. And I didn't really earn it, but yeah, I did because I did it anyway. So I'm taking it. Deal with it. You're not... No, optional, optional, optional. Okay. Don't feel like spending the money, because we don't really have it. Large-scale avionics, that will be a boon to us all. 43 days till we get to Venus, so I guess guess what we're doing instead of... <laughs> uh, in, instead of our astronaut trainings. Ding, first RTG is 3.30. When, when does their training finish? 9 April. Okay. 3.30, that's seven days. Let's go ahead and warp to that. First RTGs, yay. Launching new vessels, dumb anyway. I agree. Training mission Gemini, 4.09. That's nine days from now. Hey, look at that. And our funding is negative again, so we'll dial this back to 15%. Ha <laughs> making progress. So let's... Oh, uh, you know what we should do is roll this out. That'll take 17 days because I'm an idiot. And now we're really losing money. <laughs> Mission training is done. Yay! We can fly this again in... Nope. We're getting 1962 orbital rocketry. <laughs> it's 1969. We are just now getting that. Huzzah! Alright. Five days until that's done. Warp to complete. All right, let's get this underway, shall we? Uh, shoots and EVAs for everyone. <laughs> yeah, 19 days until our Venus orbiter is actually at Venus and ready to do its at Venusy things. Launch. This will take much less time than that. Oh no, you have the skills to send more science stuff to Venus than needed. Sucks to be you. <laughs> yeah, you did things in the wrong order deal with it. Nothing like losing a contract slot for six months, exactly. So when we get there, we'll get there, and it'll it'll get done. All right, we're going to get this launch up underway. I doubt we'll have time to actually do the rendezvous. But, uh, I don't know. We'll at least be underway. <laughs> we'll be much closer to... Oh gosh, did I... I bet you I didn't change out their fucking science. Uh, maybe I did. Power tool, simple. I'm hoping I did. Invalid situation. Who cares? All right. Now then, where is our target? 
get the blue for two docker probe it should be somewhere along that line because because november docking target yay set as target uh sent guidance scoot you over just a nudge all right uh, i guess we need to launch in the plane of target or do we want to launch to target a longitude of ascending node which of these is better for rendezvous so I feel like this is pretty generic, but doesn't set you up. Does that set you up better for docking? Dockening? And let's figure out some numbers here. 297 by 300. So for now, let's just go 300 by 300. We don't need to attach altitude. I'm just going to do launch into plane of target. That says we launch in two hours. Let me hit a board on that. Launch into target LAN. That's also in two hours. So I are these two ways of doing the same thing? I don't know. Oh, we do need to adjust this roll to zero before we plane is plane. And just means you'll you'll cross the equator at the same place. How is that different? I fail to see the distinction there. Like, where's launch to rendezvous? <laughs> that's what I want. Honestly, if that's the target, we're waiting two hours, so that will put it kind of off behind us somewhere, right? I'll say, oh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's almost right over. So uh, let's just, I mean... The timer's pretty much the same. So wherever it's going to put us, that's where it's going to put us. All right. Uh, engines, clamps, booster sep, staging, beauty ring, um, tower. You can't launch into the target's plane. Oh, okay. You just launched a lot of target in your launch site. Latitude is higher than your target orbit. Oh. Bort. Launch into plane of target. <laughs> Carry on. Yeah, exact same timer, but yeah, since we can, I guess we will. Uh... Let's set this to 350. Just in case, if we need to turn around and slow it down, then we 100% will. Uh, where are you going? You're going to turn right back, aren't you? Yes, you are. Because Lord help you if you try to make that pitch maneuver end over end with those boosters like that. Everyone here will die. Again. <laughs> Alright, where is the target relative to us currently? Is that it right behind us? No, that's in free alpha. Yeah, our target way the F off over here somewhere, I think. So it's going to be an orbit or two before we can catch up to it. Or it catches up to us. Whichever the case may be, it's going to be fine. Hey, our first daytime launch of the stream! <laughs> Still think these clouds look okay? They have, like, furry cotton. <laughs> Low-res cotton balls. Man, we are going fast! We are low and going very quickly. Good thing we got that escape tower to break the air for us. It's okay, Kerbals aren't people. <laughs> the, the distinction has been noted. This is like Man, Manny Kruger was our first Kerbal in, in, in orbit, I should say. Probably your fourth or fifth flight? Eh, better than stock clouds. Marginally so, yes.
Alright. We're doing okay. Boosters, clearing away. And it looks like we'll still have 111 meters per second of margin, which is great. I really expected our, uh... I think MechJev is doing dumb stuff again, because I figured he would be pitched way lower than this already, but is not. Do I understand it for our current altitude? No. But here we are. I really wonder if I change the nose design on the LES, if we can claw back a couple meters per second. Because it does not seem very aerodynamic, to be very honest with you. I'm a little shocked by it. That, uh, that point and then this kind of flare out down here seems like it would really cause some problems when you're moving through max Q, but I don't know. I copied it. I looked very closely at the Mercury LES tower while building this, so... Maybe I'm wrong, but I should probably look at the Apollo LES and see how that one differed. Stable guidance. So it's working. That's what it thinks. And that's what it lies to us. That's how MechJev lies to you. It tells you everything's fine, and then it just it hot stages with two kilometers per second left in your tanks. Stop at stage three is in effect. You'd know like you to have a stop at stage four, if at all possible, please. Oh, thank God. We had a small avionics hiccup, but we are back in working orders now. <laughs> Everything is fine. This is fine. LES has been jettisoned. Booster has been separated. We are in push to orbit. Yeah, looks like we'll have a hundred and some odd meters per second left in this tank, so we're going to keep it attached and just uh, fire up our fuel cell after we have made it to orbit. Finally starting to stable out on this pitch. Our apogee is uh, 322 meters per second. We will be going, yeah, our target will be going faster than us, so it should catch up to us in a few orbits time. I hope. I said working, not working correct. Okay, fine. <laughs> fine. You are correct. <laughs> Alright, make sure our experiments are running. Engineer is required. Are you fucking kidding me? You two idiots can't use a hand tool? For fuck's sake. Well, fine. It's an empty experiment. We're just going to have to let go. Two hours and two hours on orbital maneuvering and simple organism egg growth. So we should be able to knock both of those out this flight without too much issue. Uh, their on orbit endurance should be 14 days. Should be <laughs> 14 days. <laughs> yeah, now nah, you're going to have to pitch down, MechJev, because you have overshot your desired apogee. Somewhat significantly. And there it is. Yeah, what are we looking at for margins? 115 meters per second. Not bad, I'll take it. Oh man, I'm going to need to bring up Rendezvous Planner. I'm still back in the mindset from my 1.1.3 save where Rendezvous Planner was garbage. <laughs> I did my all my rendezvous manually, but maybe we'll maybe we'll give it another shot. Who knows? Uh, that rendezvous target has been in orbit for a couple of years now, so it's a good bet the solar panels on it are not working. It will not be able to uh, maneuver or orient to us, so that's a thing. <laughs> God, did I take the fork in contract? Yeah, first rendezvous. Oh, we haven't done first rendezvous, so we can't do first docking. We're gonna. <laughs> not that we can, but we're gonna. Can't go back to pre-purple noodle, pre noodle rendezvous. Oh, really? Hmm. 
All right, I'll give it a shot. Electric charge, yeah, alternator on the engine's running. So we, we don't need much worry about that. Box reserves are running low, I bet. <laughs> Same, we only just started using it. Principia makes rendezvous so easy. Interesting. Makes save files so foolhardy. <laughs> so my only concern for using it is that from everything I've seen, it does not go well with long running saves, and I do love me a long running save. All right. We're in orbit! Yay! No. Yes. Um, processes. Gemini stopped running. There we go. And so our electric charge is charged. That's what we like to see. All right. RCS to arm. And mech jeb. Uh, I guess rendezvous planner or autopilot. Let's see what autopilot does for us. Rendezvous autopilot, desired final distance, 100 meters, max number of phasing orbits, 5, max closing velocity. Let's turn off auto warp for right now. I wish this would tell me just like plot a node. Engage autopilot. 200, yeah, disengage. No, no, no. What does that message say? An intercept window would be 52.6 orbits away, which is more than the maximum of 5. Increase phasing rate by establishing new phasing orbit. Okay. So let's turn that off. Let's go to Rendezvous Planner. You make a habit of cleaning up after yourself. It's fine in long saves. Ah, uh, see, I'd have to establish a new habit, especially since all the avionics come free with C4 these days. Oh, interesting. All right. Uh, intercept with Holman transfer, 4.1 meters per second in three days. Man. <laughs> Hmm. In three days, I think all of our fuel would have burned off, but four meters per second, a lot more doable. So probably not worth keeping the service module attached for. What do y'all think? Right bracket, range safety, left bracket. <laughs> all right, I'm going to go ahead and stage off the service module. Just because uh, a four meter per second maneuver on this hefty fork and engine doesn't bode well for us, but I think we can make it four days. We should, right? Uh, best place to check that is here. Zenith blue for two. Click on you. Um, data? No. Info. Uh, liquid hydrogen be gone. Yeah, okay. We don't care about supplies. Electric charge perpetual. Food, 14 days. Water, 7 days. Oxygen, 8 days. So if we are pulling our rendezvous in 3 days... No, oh, no, that's just... Well, we should be able to nail it hours after that. <coughs> our liquid hydrogen will last 4 hours. Oh man, yeah, I'm still muted. I forgot. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Could I boost my orbit so it catches up faster? Yeah, do you think 400 is enough or should we do 450? It's 28 meters per second. That's a better use of our ignition. It'll only take a second or two. <laughs> 
I wonder if, can I do maneuver planning better than this? Okay, yeah, so that means we'll catch up to it on the nighttime side, and that's meh. Nah. It is what it is. Let's... Should we go for 500? Let's just go for 500. Who cares, right? Uh, remove all nodes, create node, and execute next node. We'll use this for one last bump. And then, oh man, I gotta go. <laughs> so we'll we'll hit this bump. We'll get rid of the uh, service module, and then uh, we'll have to find another Kerbal streamer to raid. And then I'm gonna have to call it a night or a week. But hey, um, we we got some prospective wins in the fire. <laughs> oh, we did complete our uh, Comsat program that we took just for the sake of having money and then it ended up being the thing that screwed us. But hey, it's uh, it's done. We did it. It's over. We made things happen. I guess. Probably. All right. Uh, yeah, let's auto warp, please. I was just sitting here waiting for auto warp to auto warp and it wasn't auto warping. Quite confusing, I must say. How's our electric charge? Are we still staying topped it off? Yeah, our liquid hydrogen is depleting rather quickly. My... Man, how many MLIRs did I put on that tank? Is that boil off, or are we actually burning through it that quickly? Oh, jeez, you doofus. Ah, uh, okay, abort. You absolute doofus. Kill rotation. <laughs> Fuck me. Never let that stupid engine do absolutely anything. Uh, 500 by 300, so we're really... We're not that bad. Uh, intercept with home and transfer is 19 meters per second in 20 hours! Hey! It's no longer four days. So as soon as we've arrested this spin, we will then get rid of our now useless CSM. Command sir, our service module. In will get to deploying things proper. Provided, of course, this thing doesn't run out of RCS propellant before it arrests our spin. Absolutely ridiculous. Hey, 20 hours, much better. I think I'd rather wait that long than four days, which is really kind of pushing the edges of things, although... Um, 19 meters per second to move to intercept, and it's probably going to be about 100 meters per second or so to intercept. Ditching it during the spin could help with separation. <laughs> this is a collar, like this is a tube, and our solar panels are directly underneath it. We don't want to smash them against the sides of anything. <laughs> spin my rocket right round, baby. <laughs> like a rocket, baby, right round, round, round. Okay. Have we arrested our spin? Okay, off kill rotation. You you done arrested it. Let's just let's just call it a day. Fantastic. Quick saving. Staging. Now it's 43 meters per second. What the shit just happened? Move all nodes. Intercept with home and transfer. 20 hours, 16.8 meters per second. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so how are our liquid hydrogen reserves doing? Yeah, meh. That one's at 12, and that one's at 11. What the fuck happened? Oh, that's, that's LH2, that's LH2. And that's LOX, okay. All right, that's, that's what explains the discrepancy. So we're going to leave stuff alone. We're going to nail that next node. Certified Buzz Aldrin moment. <laughs> nice. All right, y'all. I'm going to take a quick save. This is uh, where we're going to have to end the stream this week, unfortunately. But uh, thank you all so much for hanging out. It's a good week. 
I have to say. Let's see, uh, let's see who's out there. Who can we give a raid to? Man. Nobody really playing Kerbals. Let me just double check on that and we'll see uh, see what all we got going out there. But anyway, I'm going to start rolling the outro. I really do got to get going. I got like two minutes. But anyway, <laughs> so thank you so, so much for hanging out. I really, really appreciate it. I mean, good time with the race car and everything. Oh, thanks, Rizuki Kiri. Uh, I am definitely going to have a good time with the race car. <laughs> everything else, yeah, man. Maybe. <laughs> we don't know yet. <laughs> Man, no one is playing RSS today. And that makes me sad. Oh well. Um, you know what? We'll go drop in on Malky. He's good people. Anyway, alright. Outro. Alright, y'all. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out. I really, really appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So, uh, until then, see you later. Thank you.